Do you want to give it another shot, Jack? <sighs> Welcome to Don't Miss This Podcast with Sammy B and Jackie D. Did I do it right? Nope, Sam Butler and Fuck! Jack Anderson first. <laughs> <laughs> I get so excited. No, see, I'm a stickler. I'm, fr- I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a freaking uh, perfectionist. I, I respect that. Mm. I respect that. I'm being attentive. Mm. Uh, no, it's, it, it, I mean, we'll get into it later, but it's a problem. Yeah. And actually, but uh, tr- you know what? You do it your way. <laughs> you do it your way, I man. Got I got to let go of shit like this. <laughs> Welcome to Don't Miss This Podcast with Sam Butler and Jack Anderson, a.k.a. DMT with Sammy B and Jackie D. There you go. Sam Butler, how you doing today? I'm doing all right. A little groggy right now. Just came out from a naparoo. Got the grogs. Got the grogs. Yeah. Not the gorilla grogs, to be confused. I get that. Yep. Um, I don't know. Doing all right. Uh, you know, except for uh, Sunday. No, not Sunday. Monday. Yesterday. Mm-hmm. Man. I don't know what happened uh, at the diner when mm-hmm. we left on Sunday, but I spent that entire span between that and yesterday afternoon just violently ill. Really? Because I know you had like car sickness on the way. Yeah, back. and yeah. I thought it was just car sickness, but no, oh, no, no, it was it was like I I, I don't I can't because I didn't eat anything beyond that, mm-hmm. but it was just like nothing wanted to be in me. Everything wanted out. Right, right. <laughs> I don't know if it was just the accumulation of the entire wedding weekend mm. or if it was just that one meal, but it needed out of me. <laughs> it was like a anal exorcism. Yeah. You um, know, a reverse enema. <laughs> <laughs> it was not fun. An like, anacism. Like, I'd go to the bathroom, leave the bathroom, sit on the couch, and be like, I gotta go again. <laughs> It was there. ridiculous. I've done that, man. That happens when I'm in the morning. Like, I'll wake up and I'll take my shit and I'll be like, all right, we're good, we're good. And then I'm making breakfast and I'm like, oh, oh, my God. Yeah. And then I go and it's like two times bigger. And then mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, that's got to be the last one. And then before I shower, I'm getting ready and I'm like, oh, number three? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Where did this one come from? Man, that, that's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a morning ritual at this point. Yeah, uh, <laughs> got to be. Got to be. Um, otherwise, doing pretty good. Yeah. How about you, my friend? Man, I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. I'm a little tired. A little tired. It took me a minute to get out of bed today, but uh, now it's good. As I told you, I had uh, lunch with old Coach Moore, mm. Mister. We are Columbine. Yeah, actually, I consider him the spirit of Columbine. I would too. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, the spirit of Columbine is a uh, lovely elderly elderly black man. Yeah, and uh, great fellow. Does he still show up for pep rallies? I think so. He's still like kind of teaching and kind of coaching. Like he's, really, yeah. Like he's kind of in the. I ether. knew there's no way he was gonna be totally out. No. out. Like I don't think in his fiber of his being he could totally retire and leave Columbine. Man, exactly. Like, he is mu- as much Columbine as Columbine is him. It's like know? Mr. D. Him and Mr. D are the two right. people that will just kind of always be. They're always roots. be there for sure. They are the roots of Columbine. Actually, right? Yeah. Um. Have we even talked about this on the podcast before about them rebuilding Columbine? I, I, I thought about it. I feel like we mentioned it last I, week, but we might have said after the show. I yeah, I think we yeah. might have. But I mean, well, I guess what's your take on it? You know, at first I was, of course, very upset. I was like, yeah. I was like, hey, like, what, 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 guys? This is where I went to high school. There's so much history to it. There's mm-hmm. all this stuff. But then, like. I started putting everything together, and, like, Mr. D was behind it. Oh, yeah, well, that did you see his post on Facebook? Mr. D's? Yeah, he had a big um, old paragraph about it, supporting it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I heard Tonelli was all about it, mm-hmm. and all these people that I, all these teachers and faculty that I really love and respect mm-hmm. are behind it. Right. And also, I looked at every other school in yes, this district. exactly. <laughs> all these other schools have had a major upgrade. Yeah. They ripped out all of Bear Creek and rebuilt it like two or three times bigger. Yep. Columbine is the last one to get an upgrade. Yeah. And I think part of it was because of the same reasons we have is the sentimentality, right. you know. I mean, it is a very special school, and I mean, something very important did go down there. But for that very reason, yeah. it's become a real problem recently. And they want to push it like up on the football field and stuff like yeah. that. And... Yeah, because I mean, they, the whole math wing is sliding down the hill. Yeah, yeah. Like it has, it has been for years, <laughs> and we've just been like, no, no, that crack in the floor hasn't gotten bigger. Yeah, it's no big deal. Yeah, it's huh? no big deal. We'll just yeah. throw some caulking in it. It happens in California all the time with earthquakes. Right. Why, why should we be afraid right. of it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but like that's the whole thing was, you know, I was just like, oh, man, because I mean, 
you know, we spent all four years there. We mm -hmm. built our old friendship family there. We had football there. It was just like a big part of our lives. And, uh, and another thing that's dawned on me, we've been out of high school longer than we were in it. Yeah, yeah. At this point, and that's kind of a whoa. Part of that, part of today's lunch, so we all went to, to DU, uh, where, where, you know, I went to college and whatnot. And I haven't been to DU since I graduated, like on mm. campus, campus. Mm. And it was, it, it's one of those strange things, man. There's a lot of sediment. And it, I also realized, too, I was like, oh, shit, it has been sometime quite a few things have happened in the right. past five years yeah <laughs> exactly yeah since and, high school yeah yeah and i mean like if we get the chance to at least walk around one more time before they finalize this thing and yeah. you know just be like hey remember when this happened this 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 and i mean we actually did quite a bit of reminiscing this weekend mm -hmm. with the whole crew it was great to see the whole it crew was this so weekend. great man oh my it just it, it, you know, not that not that the group had lowered in importance to me, but like you know, we've all kind of grown uh, up and fallen off a little bit. The you sheer know? size of our friendship family yeah. was the uh, ultimate uh, Achilles' heel to us spending time together. Exactly, because everybody's got lives, and mm -hmm. we all have individual lives, and that's like thirteen, fifteen people. That just, that, you're juggling that you, you know? just can't get all on the same day mm -hmm. unless you plan it. You know, multiple multiple months out yeah, exactly. and say that people are getting married <laughs> <laughs> and, and also they'll do things like get married and not tell us <laughs> yeah no that's happened before uh that has happened uh they'll get married and and then they'll get uh I, we've had what three marriages now in the group yeah one yeah. of them was an actual ceremony <laughs> yeah so, so we, we just We're one for three now yeah right <laughs> <laughs> only what like nine more to go yeah um, something like that i think i think carl's will be next yeah. um which he got engaged without telling anybody just very low-key which i mean like I admire in a way that I, there, there's the exact opposite where they just post all over like eight or nine posts on mm -hmm. social media, each thing. So yeah. Be like nine Instagram posts, nine Facebook, nine tweets. There we go. You know, no. Carl was just like, yeah, I overhear you guys talk about it. I'm like, wait, what? I was like, oh yeah, me and Kelsey are, we're engaged. I'm like, what? <laughs> no announcement? Nothing? Okay. Okay. I think I heard it secondhand through Wes. I think that's who oh. I heard it from. Yeah. I can see him telling Wes first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, like, with the whole Columbine thing, I was talking to my dad about it. And, like, because it's become a real problem with all, like, that what's-her-face. Yeah, who, who went a lot crazy. of people are showing up there well, every, with bad intentions. Every single year, every single year, for 20 years now, there has been someone to call in bomb threats or shooting threats. We got locked out of school. Mm-hmm trying to come back from lunch we did well i mean like we weren't mad about it because it's, it's like, like a, yeah we right. knew it was an empty threat and we got to go home and play gears of war so that mm -hmm. was kind of cool <laughs> it was like an unfortunate thing we had to get used to yeah you know? yeah but, yeah you you like people don't understand that we are used to terrorist threats yeah pretty much but I also mean, the tourism factor has like <sighs> seriously spiked in like an aggressive and alarming rate like really disturbing Oh, I How remember. people are now fascinated by this stuff rather than trying to stop it. Because, I yeah. mean, now the shootings and stuff are like a regular thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it, yeah, they're just like, oh, another shooting happened. Yeah. That's really the whole reaction to it now. And yeah. then it's just like, something needs to be done. Ah, oh, you don't take away our guns. It's a mental health issue. And then another one happens. What's, the, what's the Jim Jeffries joke? He's like, he's like, the only argument about guns is... Fuck off. No. Fuck you. I like my guns. <laughs> <laughs> the only argument for gun control is, fuck you. I like my guns. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Or, or against gun control. Or against gun control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> fuck off. I like my guns. <laughs> yeah, no. And It's not wrong. But, I mean, yeah, we're, we're pretty used to terrorist threats around here. And right. the tourism is what's bothering me. Because mm -hmm. especially with the 20th anniversary, um... And even uh, in Aurora, like, uh, Anjanae used to work at that theater oh, the over theater, there. theater, yeah. Yeah, the theater, the Batman shooting theater. Was and, it a Regal theater? Uh, no, it was a... Harkins. AMC. Mm, Century? Okay. I don't know why I'm so fascinated by the detail of which theater it was, but... Uh... I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, sh I should know because I've been there for so much. I, yeah, I think it's a Century theater. I don't know. No doubt. Uh, no maybe doubt. Regal, too, honestly. Right. But, um... No, but while she was working there, people would walk up to the door and want to look around. Yeah, it's weird. It's like, go buy a movie ticket, yeah, asshole. Like... And also, 
don't look around a place where people were massacred. Like, yeah. What is that? What are you? What are you? What are you doing? Yeah. That's like. Um, it's just people's desire to be a part of history. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And I mean, like that. But it's a lame attempt. Yeah. And I mean, like people can go see Gettysburg and mm-hmm. like all these other places where these horrible atrocities in this country happen. But it's mm-hmm. also like uh, Gettysburg is in a functioning school. Yeah. Where yeah. people are trying to walk into the front door of a school that had already been shot up. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, I just want to look around. Fuck off. Students are going to class and we have school, or yeah, we have tourist buses. Pressing, pressing their wind face up against the windows like, I wonder if somebody died in this hallway. Like it was like I mean, some sort of like, yeah, some sort of zoo. Yeah. yeah. No, it's ridiculous. And it's like, it's really gross how it's fetishized. Because yeah. it's recent. And Columbine's one of the top, you know, I think like top, two, I, I might be pulling this statistic out of my ass. I know it's one of the safest schools in the country. Mm-hmm. But I heard it was like top 20 or something like yeah. that. Yeah. You know? Well, and also that's the thing about uh, Columbine is the stigma behind it is uh, that's been passed around uh, through just people being ignorant and not understanding or being sensitive about the subject. I remember my sister talking about going to this summer camp once and revealing that she uh, went to Columbine. It was like her freshman year. Mm-hmm. And these people were just like, oh, my God, are there still bullet holes there? Yeah. Is there blood on the walls? And it was just like, how fucking retarded are you? Yeah. I mean, I can't believe I just used the R word. When I'm talking about my sister, I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm dialing that back. <laughs> but uh, how, how stupid and ignorant do you – and insensitive, too. Yeah. And, uh, like, there's also the uh, – I've been asked, were you there? Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, actually, I was. I, I remember sitting in my AP bio class just – you know, hearing these pops in the background, then I realize, oh shit, I'm a three year old baby. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say, people, <laughs> uh, people ask me that, and I always say, oh yeah, I was shitting myself because I was four. Yeah, uh, that was my first memory was shitting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> On Halloween, uh, I actually remember the day because we had to leave St. Phillips. I had to go over to the Ogborns' house. Yeah, uh, while my mom picked up my sister, but that's about all I remember. Yeah, uh, but like. So, like, the tourism is so creepy, Mm -hmm. and so if they rip it down and take away the ability to see the original structure, I feel like that would be a thing. If they set it further back from the street and give it a little bit more of a, you know, walk and obstacle for people to get to, that'll be better. Mm -hmm. My dad was saying, just, uh, if you really want to stop it, tear the whole thing down and make, like, apartments there. I'm like, well, fair, but also... Yeah, no. This is the Columbine community. We're not getting rid of it. Yeah. And people are like, rename the school. I'm like, no. Yeah. No. You know, we don't negotiate with tourists. No, we don't. We simply (laughs) do not. (laughs) I don't know, man. It's like people ask me, it's like, oh, what was it like to go to Columbine? And I was like, oh, I don't know. I did did math and history and science and English and I did a lot of football, you know. I made friends and I went to school and I came home. Yeah, Yeah. and I was a part of one of the strongest communities I think you could Mm -hmm. be a part of. That's the other ignorant question that people say is like, aren't you afraid it's going to happen again? It's like, mm, honestly, it's like lightning striking. Yeah. Probably not going to happen there again. Literally, yeah. And, it's... you know, even when there are psychos making threats like that, like this last year with this mm-hmm. lady who drove all the way from Florida who wrote all this fascination with Eric and Dylan and all yeah. that stuff and bought a shotgun, you know, that was... And then went to Mount Evans and killed herself. Yeah. And, uh... and it was just like, well, I, I mean, like... If, if if she really wanted to do something, she wouldn't have made it public. And also, uh, you know, there was no way anybody's getting near that school. Yeah, no, that's that's one thing. Is yeah, Call Mine is one of the safest build. Like, I've gone to. I think my sister and I were just going to go, like, say hi to a teacher or two, and we. I mean, it was like so much wait time to get cleared to visit. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're they're very attentive. Like, mm-hmm. there's. Yeah. Even after hours. Yeah. Like, you can't necessarily see it from the front, you know? Like, if you're outside, it doesn't look like, you know, a building with intense security. And, mm-hmm. and nor does it have, like, uncomfortably intense well, security. they can basically lock you in that front little lobby. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to go through the office now. You can't walk through those double doors anymore. Yeah. You have to go through the lobby. And then, uh, you know, if they think you're a threat just by looking at you, they can lock you in there if mm-hmm. they felt like it, I'm sure. And uh, it's, like... It's just unfortunate. Yeah. But also, I would be pretty okay with it getting an upgrade. Yeah, I, I think it just as a as a as a school. <laughs> if Dakota Ridge has a nicer school, but that's there's something, there's something wrong. That's what I'm saying, man. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and and it really, I mean, it's 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 
I don't know exactly how we do academically in comparison, but I know we're not like bottom tier. We're we're, we're all right, and and um, you know, there's a lot of community. What some of the best sports programs in Colorado. Like right. it's it's a right. school that is doing great in spite of itself. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Exactly. And in spite of all this yeah. uh, obnoxious stuff. And itself meaning not being renovated since nineteen ninety four. You know? Right. Like there mm-hmm. no change. I mean aside from cool. senior gifts. Well yeah, and the closest thing to a renovation was our freshman year because we had to do speed and weights at Leewood. When they were redoing the roof, oh, that was yeah. pretty much it. But that's the roof. Who's yeah. looking at the roof? Yeah, <laughs> only hail. Only I mean, God. yeah, and well, actually, no. They had to re- they had to build the library. Yeah, yeah, because that's that's what I heard. Uh, according to uh, this woman I work with, because she was there, uh, they she told me that the library uh, extension is where they're going to start the construction. So from where the mm-hmm. library is back. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Cool. Which, you know, that's fine. But there's so many hills. There's so many. Well, yeah. <laughs> Forget about the math area sliding. The whole school's going to slide down. Yeah, the there's so many hills. I remember <laughs> I remember after football practice running on one of those hills and, and just trying to get back in. And it had been, like, uh, kind of raining mm-hmm. a little bit. It was wet. It was soggy out. And I was, I was trying to get around people on the path, so I tried to go around the side. And I'm running. And then, like, my le- my left foot was higher up on the hill than my right. And I took a step, and it slid, <laughs> kicked out my right foot, and I just face-planted. Blam! And then bounced down the hill. And everybody started laughing, but the one that stung most was Coach Thomas just buckled over laughing his <laughs> ass off. He's just like, it looked like you just got sniped. <laughs> Like, yeah, that probably would be funny to see. Probably would have been real funny to see if I wasn't the one actually being, you know, sniped. sniped. <laughs> uh, oh, that's awesome. So many great memories. I love it. Uh, and, you know, I mean, the one thing, though, is that uh, we did build that whole throwing area. We did. We we uh, we built it, and now I... I I can't imagine they're gonna keep that around uh, if they push everything back. I know, yeah. and I hope uh, somebody gets a splinter in the eye like I did. You did. That's right. That, that was, was so thing. annoying because I was just holding the beam up. Still, <laughs> nothing. I didn't like rub my finger or flick anything off, and I was looking directly at it. And then uh, it just—I could see it. A splinter just shot off into my eye, like it was <laughs> jumping to attack and defend the log. You got sniped again. <laughs> I got sniped. I mean, just but, a little ant in there with like a tiny, tiny yeah, gun, and it's loaded with splinters. <laughs> so you just, <laughs> you take that, Humey. <laughs> <laughs> Singing, uh, uh, fucking humming, ants marching by the Dave Matthews band. band. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say <laughs> ants were marching one by one. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. That ants a fan of the jam bands. Uh, yeah, you're a fan of the jam bands. I love and jam bands. Jack, I feel like that was just a very conscious decision that you're like, I'm going to decide. To enjoy jam bands, much like I'm going to decide to slide these chairs on either side of us right now and straddle their feet like you're sitting with them, you know, with that wide angle. I got big hips, man. They need mobility. They need mobility. Jack, you have a fat ass. (laughs) Yeah, I do. (laughs) I proved that this weekend. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) yeah. Speaking of, let's start talking about it. Chat about the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, we started that Thor's Day. Yes, 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 yes. Getting together for yep. dinner at the Breck Brewery. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we uh, we got together. I showed up uh, after dinner. Um, uh, as you are wont to do. Yeah. I'm, You're I'm always a, late. I'm a lateman. Um, yeah, you know, I didn't think that was a title you could have. But yeah, yeah. Jack Fischl, official lateman. I'm a lateman. And uh, <laughs> it was very late. I missed dinner. But I got there and uh, yeah, had a beer. You were able to. And uh, jump right in and start uh, bugging some people. That's what I do, man. That's, that's just... That's just what you do. I come in hot, heavy, and That's fast. your brand. Yeah. <laughs> it's just to come in and piss people off. It's just, it's the best. It's I, a brand. <laughs> I yeah. think it's endearing. I mean, Cody can attest to it. Isn't Jack's brand to come in and piss people off? His brand? His yeah. brand. That's what I do. Come in and piss people off. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he, he is like a bull in a china shop. I think. Except 
bull in the china shop's confused you're deliberately destroying that china shop <laughs> you, you you opened the door the bell rang the guy was just like oh can i help you find anything you're like no i'm just browsing <laughs> just start smashing shit and it's like that guy knows that something's up yeah. in, the bowl, in, in a china shop, shop. <laughs> so the second you enter a room or a conversation everyone's already kind of looking at you waiting yeah like <laughs> something something's about to happen Usually not what you uh, uh, no. I, I, I know there's an expectation of me wherever I go. I, I like to surprise people with that expectation. Mm, mm. You know, it's kind of like, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get that. But you're going to be just, you're going to be furious by the end of it. Because I'm going to surprise you in a couple mm-hmm. different ways. Yeah, so. no, because it, it's, I feel like uh, improv has only sharpened that tool. Oh, it's it's made me a freaking assassin yeah, when it comes it's, to that. Yeah. It, like some, some of the... The, the surgical drops of things like I'll be getting mad about one thing and then you'll throw something else in that undercuts me being mad because I'm re like I have to reboot the computer to get re mad at you and then you throw another one my favorite of the of this for this weekend and I felt kind of bad because you got a lot more mad than I expected you to at it like you got like genuinely pissed at me when was when I was like I was like hey Sam come with me I need to tell you something and we went and we walked and we sat down at, on a bench next to yeah. a river yeah and we sat for about yeah no that really bothered me probably 40 seconds because it, it, the way you approached me that really yeah yeah, that was bad. That was bad. Because the way you approached me was like, hey, man, I actually have something to say because I mean, this is a big weekend and, you know, you have a big responsibility. Like, that's that's the way you you approached me. And then we go and we sit on those, like, original Broncos bleachers. Because, that's of right. course, the Bessies have original bo- Broncos bleachers. Just sitting just, next to a river. Next to a river. Like, that is river decoration now is Bronco bleachers. <laughs> and we go and we sit on them. And then you just take a... You're looking out like you're, you're getting a little emotion going, like you're about to drop something on me that's going to be really, really impactful. And I'm just like, I swear to God, if you say something stupid right now, I'm going to throw you in the river. You're just like, oh, I don't have anything to say. <laughs> the you're, worst. You're an actual, actual cunt. Yeah. <laughs> And that's just how you roll, man. That is how I roll, man. <laughs> These are the things I find so funny. I've, I laughed about that till just now, and I will keep laughing about it for the rest of my life, probably. Um, this part of it is the game. Part of it is me being like, "Here's an idea, and it's gonna." There's moving parts to it. I have to be serious. I have to get them to a spot, and I have to wait long enough that the silence is clear. I have nothing to say, you know. And once I execute it to the fullest, I'm the happiest camper. That's... See, with the, this like meticulous nature, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you could be killing people. So I mean, I would, I, I would take this, I would take this over you being next Jack the Ripper. Sure, oh, sure. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Overpopulation is a real thing. Actually, yeah, I mean, actually, I'm yeah, so you could be lowering the carbon yeah. footprint yeah, instead so of. It's just you, terrorism. You're making people suffer. <laughs> you could be actually ending that suffering by killing them. I like terrorism you're, you're, without the casualties. Yeah, um, it's what Mike, what Mike Rabiglia said, but he gets kneed in the balls. It's like being electrocuted without being able to die. That's every, <laughs> that's every single thing that you do. <laughs> In this kind of fashion. I don't think I've ever, like, had, like, a close relationship or, like, like a good friend or family member that hasn't told me they hate me at least 40 times. Yeah. Uh, hey, you know what? That's the way you get love. That is. I mean, for me, that, no, it means everything. I feel like the attention is how you get the love. It, you, you do it, and you're just like, I'm acknowledged. <laughs> I still exist. I still exist. I'm still on this planet. <laughs> People still listen to yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that, you just came both. Rolling right into Breckenridge Brewery, yes, night one, party one. Just like I had, I had no plans. <laughs> um, I just was going to come in. I was going to start talking, yeah. and I was going to go. I th- I saw someone sitting at the table with blonde hair, like our good friend Garrett Hammers. Yeah, you thought it was G Hammy. I thought it was Garrett, and I almost went and and grabbed him really hard by the neck, and then I realized that was Connor's little brother, who I have no relationship with. Yep. No. Uh, <laughs> Well, and that was the thing was I had the same kind of thing walking mm. in, and I saw his little brother, and I was just like, "Oh, I guess this is one of Connor's groomsmen, a friend of his from mm-hmm. Shattern or something like that." And then I sit down, and I just keep looking at it, and I'm just like, "God, this kid looks fucking familiar." And I <laughs> lean to Garrett and Trevor, I'm like, "What's his name?" They're like Tanner. I'm like, 
oh, okay. You know, I just feel like I've met him. He's like, probably because you have. That's Connor's little brother. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Time has passed. He's about to be a senior in high school. I saw him in middle school. <laughs> He's like almost an adult. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like my nephew. If you guys haven't mm-hmm. seen my nephew in a long time and since high school and stuff, I mean, he is a grown boy. Yeah. Just out there raving. Straight up man. Like, yeah. Two summers in a row, he just has a job to go rave. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yep. Oh, because like, he's, um, what does he do for work? Oh, I don't know. He just goes from job to job, and all that money goes towards going to uh, EDM concerts. Nice. <laughs> nice. I mean, at least he's enjoying himself, but uh, I don't know. It's a real what... lifestyle, man. It is. Yeah. I mean, it's like being a ski bum yeah. or a surfer bum or something like that. Like you, you really subscribe to a lifestyle of a certain demographic of people. Yes, you do. You know, and it's, a, it's an activity that's not for everyone. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's for no one. <laughs> a lot of beautiful, almost naked ladies there, Dom. But, um, uh, pretty much late naked. Yeah, no. I got there and I, you know, immediately after having that, uh, you know, I, I don't know this person. I go sit down and I just look and Dylan turns to me. And I'm like, oh, my mustache. <laughs> mustache Reno. Speaking of, I was thinking, just a quick side note before I forget to bring it up. We got to have Wes and Dylan on the PCAST. Absolutely. We got to get the group. We got to get, get the Trilla squad. We do. We do. The Trilla squad name is still uncopyrighted. No, that's true. <laughs> it still belongs to the Trilla Gorillas. The Trilla Gorillas have to be in the mist. They must. Yes. <laughs> we also have to figure out how to be able to record four channels. Yeah. I yeah. can get one more with my recorder. Yeah. I was thinking that. Or we just split mics. I don't know. Is that a thing? I mean, just, you can get splitters for these channels. Oh, I just meant like, you know, Dylan oh. sits here, Wes sits there. And we just yeah. put the well, mics. Well, we kind of, we did that for The Last Jedi. It worked. Oh, yeah, I did. It worked. And we were really spread out too. Yeah. Because that was but, Except mic. you, you got to hold the mic next to you. Me and Carl kind of had to lean. Yeah. And like, then and yeah. kind of pass. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, but, he's got a stash. Yes, now, we do, yeah. but we do need Wes and Reno on here. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, we can get a little Joe. Joe oh, would be Joe would Joe. be delightful. I want everybody on here. Yeah, yeah, I want Just, everybody. Well, and also that's the thing is like this whole episode is pretty much going to be talking about uh, this weekend, and the people we're talking about are the people who listen to the show. They are the they're majority. Gonna this. Like that was that was a shocker yeah. when I came in and Trevor was like, "I love your guys' podcast." Yeah. Like, <gasps> people are about it's it. It's more yeah. than just my mom and girlfriend. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> our friends, our friends are good friends. Our friends are, are yes. I love, but I love our that, friends. That was one thing, was <laughs> throughout the night, you would keep bringing up, oh, we were talking about this on the podcast, and I kept like getting irritated. Like, they could just listen to the podcast, <laughs> Jack. <laughs> <laughs> we're here to party. Don't, don't talk about the podcast, because the podcast is always there. Dude, my life is the podcast. Yeah, well, All I'm I mean, thinking about is the podcast. I love it. All the time. I love doing this, I, man. I, I'm, I'm a podcast podcast brain yeah, yeah 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 no i'm like i just think about how each episode we get better and better i think so we have very palatable chem- chemistry <laughs> 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 but talking about it on a, the night of a bachelor party not the time man i don't even know what i was doing throughout that bachelor party uh, well i'll mistake. tell you I one thing mistake. i'll tell you one thing you were uh going for it you were yeah. you 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 saw like it was like um like this was a wild bronco of a night, and you decide I'm going to break it. Yeah, I'm you, break you it. grabbed it by its mane and you hopped on its back, and you just rode no matter where it took you. Mm-hmm. And uh, also, you forced some things that you know were some real curveballs. When I uh, we would go to that bar after the Breckenridge Brewery and uh, that Platt South Platte River Bar, mm-hmm. which right out the gate we all orders Maker's Mark. And one thing, I haven't taken a shot at a bar in a very long time, uh-huh. you know, because I just have taken shots by myself, and I have the right, my measurement. Mm-hmm. I forgot that it's like two of what I take shots of mm-hmm. in the thing, and it's Maker's Mark, and I forgot that it was way stronger than regular whiskey. Yeah. And so I take it, and I'm like, uh-oh, this is bigger. This is bigger than usual. <laughs> I swallow it, swallow it. There's still some left, and I just cough it up into my nose. Oh, no. And it just lights my nose on fire. Yeah. And I immediately, I'm like, fuck, damn it. Because I'd only <laughs> had, like, two beers and then that flight at the brewery. Uh-huh. And then that shot, that shot up my nose. And just, all you could smell and taste was that whiskey. And I'm just like, fuck. And I go, I lean over the balcony and throw up. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> and it's like, you know, that that was just upsetting yeah. like all the, I, I you know throwing up can't is nothing less than upsetting but mm-hmm. that one was upsetting because i wasn't too fucked up that was just poor 
poor thing. Wes was just like over there sipping on it. I'm like, that was an option? Yeah. <laughs> that was an option to just sip on this fa- this fine whiskey. Nope. Nah. nah. Nope. Nope. You gotta take a uh, shot. Speaking of, <laughs> I didn't check my shoe bag for, uh, I don't know, ever since I changed my shoes into Crocs for the reception. Hmm. And so I've just been carrying around this whole time. And <laughs> I get home on uh, Sunday. I start unpacking. I open it. There's, there's like I had like three quarters of a bottle of Maker's Mark in there. Oh, shit. And I'm just uh-huh. like, I don't know if somebody put this here. Because I remember pretty much everything mm-hmm. of, of the wedding and packing everything up. And I think what my sentiment was is that, you know, everything in Connor's room was packed up, ready to go, except for that. And I'm like, I'm going to get this so I can give it to him later. And then I completely forgot about it. Mm-hmm. Com- completely forgot about it. I'm like, yeah. well, I guess I have this now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> like, uh, then after that, everything was fine. And then we get beer going. You know, I'm starting to drink a beer. And... Uh, these guys over there start revving motorcycles oh, really yes. loud. Mm-hmm. And just as a joke, I lean to Joey and Wes, and I'm just like, oh, my God, I bet those guys get so much puss. <laughs> like, the most puss they could possibly get. And then Joey's like, you should yell that at him as I'm taking a drink. And I just pictured myself just leaning over the uh, railing, just going like, hey, you guys get off. <laughs> and I just start laughing, and I just after after whiskey had been up in my nose, beer goes up in there, and I shit you not, I sneeze for thirty minutes, <laughs> thirty minutes straight, and it's like Jack sneezes too. Mm. Hey Jack, how do you sneeze? Uh, I sneeze like Katrina wished that it was trying to catch up with me. Mm. Uh, I, I sneeze. You mean the hurricane? Yeah, yeah, straight up. I sneeze. Mm. Like, I'm Godzilla waking up from a long nap, mm, man. Mm. I, I'm, I'm a monster when mm. I sneeze. I, I, would, I would compare you to, uh, you know, normal people sneeze like semi-automatic guns, yeah. and you sneeze like a, a minigun. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like that episode of Parks and Recreation, where it starts <laughs> off and Andy's sitting there, and Leslie's like, oh, Andy, how you doing? Like, oh, okay, I just... <gasps> That's you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she's like, oh my God, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's how you sneeze. But that's how I was sneezing. Mm-hmm. And I and, and they don't have any napkins on the table. So I had to keep running to the bathroom to get more and more paper towels. And then I come back and I get my nasal situation handled. And then I look over and you are snorting Cholula and sugar. Yeah, yeah. Cholula yeah, yeah. makes with sugar. How, how did you land on that? Uh, Garrett put it together for me. Um, I forget how the sh- did. I, did I pull out the sugar? I don't know. Someone pulled out pulled out the sugar, ripped it, spilled some on the table. I immediately was like, "Oh, it's like cocaine." So let's make it look like a line of cocaine. The improv brain kicked in. The improv brain yeah, kicked you, in. What'd you do? You just you took a card out mm-hmm. and like put it in a line. Just put it in a line, and it was yep. a lot of sugars. So it was a yeah. big little bump, and. Uh, and oh, then, that's not a bump, Jack. That's a line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I, I looked at it and I was like, I, yeah. Oh, should I snort this? Because that was something I have done in high school <laughs> is smor- snort uh, miscellaneous uh, um, spices of such. And uh, I don't quite remember like when. Oh, I don't know. It happened like two or three times just at my house. My my parents had that little. Um, that that grinder. Oh yeah. yeah, the little the the bowl with the little yeah, club grinder no, thing. Yeah, I remember. And people would put shit in there and grind it. And of course, I'm the guy that's gonna say yeah. Let's yeah, go. because that's your brand, that's, man. That's what I do. It's and just another. That's another dish you could smash in that china shop. Exactly. Uh, and, and and I get excited by. Well, these and you things. defy expectations every time. I don't know why our expectations aren't always zero. Yeah, I know. Or always be prepared for anything and everything. <laughs> you are you are a uh, true. Pandora's box of chaos. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, Pandora doesn't go back in the box. He only comes, comes out. out. <laughs> <laughs> the monkey doesn't go back in the bottle. <laughs> monkey doesn't go back in the bottle. Or monkey's out of the bottle. Oh, yeah, man. monkey's out of the bottle. Even That's not even an expression. <laughs> Pandora doesn't go back in the box. He only comes out. <laughs> but uh, now Garrett put the Cholula on to, like, get that extra challenge. And so I was like, Yeah, because oh, he's is... just like, oh, I bet he won't. And then, Jack, oh. you you always... I always do. Your challenge accepted. Mm-hmm. You're, you're worse than neil patrick harris on how i met your mother that's right that's you, right. you will take any and all challenges because i'm here to live man i'm here to uh, experience to mm. put my senses mm. to the test 
But what are you running from? Uh, what am I running from? A <laughs> uh, whole, uh, whole, whole host of issues. Uh, <laughs> uh, don't we all? Yeah, um, we all have our own demons. But then we... Uh, I lost feeling in half my face for a while. Yeah, and yeah. then I ask you about it, and you're like, actually, the sinus on that side of my face is doing really well yeah. right now. I'm like, you son of a bitch. The next day, my, my left sinus was wide. The next day, my sinuses were just like my eyes felt swollen. Well, and the Because, thing... well, I mean, I can kind of understand because the beer kind of right. thin- foams. But you know, not pleasant. Well, the thing about this weekend, and I was too, hoping you'd be worse. Yeah, no, uh, and I, I, ha- I was and had been through through a lot of it. I did uh, on Wednesday, like the day the day after the pod, or no, the day we did the podcast. I woke up and I was like kind of sick, and I was like, oh, that's how I normally uh, feel. And then, so you cured yourself kind, kind with of, that sugar I, Cholula snort. But then I got stuffy and like, so it was like a temporary. You know, it was kind of like a quick high, and then I, I like went right back to feeling mm-hmm. shitty. For like the whole weekend. And that was the terrible thing about this weekend that for me that kept happening was like every day it happened. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I would come in hot for the first half of the day, the event, whatever. Mm-hmm. I would be I would be like, okay, I'm on all cylinders, we're good to go, and then I would just crash. But that's that's because you came in with all your energy mm-hmm. and lost it because you're around people. Exactly. Because you're an introvert. Yeah. And that was the thing for me where I'd be the exact opposite. Mm-hmm. And uh you know, I'd get, you know, I'd keep getting higher and higher and higher with my energy, and then it'd plateau, and you know, not even plateau. It would feel like I would, I. Oh, it's like every other thing with me. I, I keep trying to binge it because I want to keep going more and more and more and more. Mm-hmm. And I've been like that with everything my entire life that I enjoy. I just more and more and more. Mm-hmm. I want to have the most of everything as possible at once. Mm-hmm. You know. Like, people can make a soda or a Gatorade last several hours. I crush those immediately. Yeah. That's how I am with booze. That's how I am with weed. I try and get it down as much in me as possible. And that's actually a really, you know, that's addictive personality problem. And, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I did it with Harry Potter for three years. <laughs> All day, every day. I need to just binge Harry Potter. Yeah. Oh, give me that Potter. I get it. <laughs> oh, I am a Potter head and I need it. Oh, give me those spells. Uh, he was hooked to that scar, mm-hmm. man. Oh. I gotta get high. I gotta get higher than Leviosa, man. <laughs> I gotta get higher. You know, you're chasing that Quidditch snitch, I, man. Right now, I'm with Guardium. I'm not Leviosa. I gotta get higher, you're, man. You're chasing the snitch, bro. Yeah. You can't. But be that's how I was. Snitch. And then, like, I would get depressed when attention would be off of me, mm-hmm. and the, you know, it bottomed out. But I mean, that's for later. Yeah. Um. But then we, uh, yeah, you would start off like bam, and then. <laughs> Yeah, and, we'll go, and I blame Thursday evening for most of it because I'm not you. I, I, well, you went hoard. Yeah, I, I really, I did. Uh, I, I was the bull, and then I decided to take life by the horns, so I just grabbed my own. Yeah, you grabbed just, your own. Uh-huh, I just started jumping yeah. through the china shop. Yeah, you were, you were, you were riding your own bull, you know. Yeah, and uh, literally, uh, towards later. Uh, then we uh, all leave that bar. We're mm-hmm. gathered in the parking lot where Wes breaks out this uh, Colorado Rocker whis- whiskey, yeah. which is a uh, it's a, a sip and whiskey. And he demands Connor takes a shot, yeah. and Connor has been fed drinks upon drinks at this point, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm sure you know he's not like the uh, a party animal like we were intending to make him that night. That's right. And so he takes that one shot, and you just saw it out of face. I took one sip, and I almost restarted what I had <laughs> ended in there. I was like, "Oh my god, it is burning! Why did I take the whole shot? Ow! Like this is definitely what you call a sip and whiskey." Yes, yeah. And uh, Wes, because he is a man, he he's just like, "Oh, I enjoy whiskey," and I'm just like, "Well, you didn't take the shot of Maker's Mark, but you're demanding <laughs> that he takes a shot of this definite, you know, strip the paint off of a boat kind of whiskey." <laughs> And Connor's just standing there, and he's trying to maintain, and everybody's just surrounding him, watching him. Uh, and then Wes just goes, hey, if you got to go, you got to go, and then, or you can go. And he just starts walking towards you guys and just yeah. spewing like, like he was trying to attack you like a vomiting zombie. This is, <laughs> this, this is in the moment exactly what I saw happen. Connor takes a shot, stands for a minute, Wes goes... Hey man, if you need to throw up, just go for it. And Connor goes. <laughs> yep, he was, he was just like, oh, I got permission. It was like it was like, hey man, if you need to puke, to puke. <laughs> like no gap yep. in between the sentence and the action. Right. Yeah. And then uh, that's when uh, I like had... a pelican 
Bur- purging its goal. That yeah. it was me at Comic Con. Exactly. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, it was, and it was one spurt. It wasn't like he had enough of you know keep going. It was mm-hmm. just like all right. Yeah. It was it was literally like Connor got the Heimlich maneuver and his intestines popped out. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. was just, okay. That's okay. what I was I'm choking good. on. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good now. And then uh, let's see. I made the mistake of forgetting that Joey and Wes were not in the wedding, so they mm. didn't take Friday off. So what my plan was was to have Wes and Joey drop Wes's truck off in my house and drive my car there. So I would, you know, because Wes doesn't, you know, uh, well, I don't know. He uh, He's usually the one to drive mm-hmm. by the end of the night. Him and you. Yeah. And. Uh, we usually did us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, DDDs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Like, I had to leave, and I get back to my house, and I, I can't drive, so I'm just like, I call you up, uh-huh. and I'm just like, hey, when you guys get to Shotgun Willie's, let me know, I'll take a lift out there. Mm-hmm. You're like, all right, cool, we're almost there. And I pop on, like, an episode of a TV show, I can't remember, I think it was, like, uh, New Girl, probably, mm-hmm. probably. <laughs> it's usually a safe bet, it's New Girl. And, you know, I'm sitting there, and I think I had two puffs of weed, and I just blinked and it was two in the morning I had, I had a missed text from you that said we have arrived yeah oh no you said we have arrived we have arrived yeah you said yes. with a th uh-huh. and i was just like oh man he's using old english it's about <laughs> to get lit and uh from the stories you guys told me which i mean like i i, I don't do them justice mm-hmm. what I, I like i told tanner about stuff and i'm just like i wasn't there yeah you were there bud I, yeah, yeah. tell us about it so uh, tell we, us about the inside of Shotgun Willies because you can't record it. Yeah, no, you can't record it. That that text was the last one I had the opportunity to send. Um, and so we we roll up Shotgun Willies. Jacob Bader arrives like as soon as we got there. It was crazy with the timing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we go in because I forgot Jake was coming. Yeah, yeah. Jake Jake got off super late, so we yeah. were like, all right, we got the surprise for Connor. Meet us at Shotgun Willies. And it's it's one of the nicer strip clubs in Colorado. It's where a lot of like athletes and celebrities Snoop go when they're in town. Yeah, Snoop Dogg goes there frequently. Apparently. Wes's grandfather owns it. It's, yeah, so we, which I feel like they should they should have told Trevor or Trevor should have told Wes sooner because I feel like Wes might have been able to get us something. Yeah, there was some there was a lot of miscommunication. Might, as might far have been as... able to pull some strings because that's the thing. I I got in the truck with Wes and Joey, and I'm like, "Are you guys excited for Shotgun Willie's?" And they're like, "What?" <laughs> I'm like, Yo, what? Oh, they don't know. Yeah. And then Trevor tried to be coy about it in the, in the brewery, and I was just like, "You mean Shotgun Willie's?" And he's just, well, I'm like, "No, I did what you did, the yeehaw uh-huh. as the clue." And he's like, "Yep," and I'm like, "God damn it!" So he didn't tell anybody except for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if he told Wes, we might have been able to pull some strings, get some uh, better deals or whatnot. Yeah. You know, you might have been able to get a discount. A buy, a buy nine, get one free. <laughs> I, man, if that exists out there, I'd like to. Re- I felt like Winston when he buys all the, the funny money. <laughs> Money. That was really the one thing at the end I could really come to peace with. I was like, well, at least I'm still Winston. Yeah, uh. Exactly, exactly. You're still Winston, but I'm still Nick. And uh, that that was the that was the funny thing. Uh, I love how he pulls out two thousand dollars in bunny money. Like who who decides to just pull? Who has that much money that they can spend? And why? And in that strip club, in that world, why why would you replace your singles? That the the strippers are there for the money, mm-hmm. the money specifically. Oh no, it's because of that reason. Yeah, <laughs> to fool people, dummies like Winston. Oh yes, fair and myself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but you guys get there. Yeah, we get there. The an- Animal House kicks off tell me about it jack yeah well we walked in and uh we're showing the guys our ids and dylan trevor and connor very specific three are up front showing the guy the ids and um and they're also the three people who aren't single in that group exactly these are the three that are married and uh like yeah married and about to be married yeah trevor's over a year married dylan's two Two, now yeah two and a half two and a half and uh and connor's about to get married and the guy looks at Connor's ID, and like he somehow heard that Connor was the groomsman. I I might have told him, and he was like, he's like, oh, twenty three, and you're already doing this one, huh? And like right in front of those three, and I was like, yeah, no, because Dylan got married what, when he was twenty, twenty one. Yeah, twenty, and then and, uh, Trevor what, last year, twenty two, so yeah, yeah, and, and then, then Connor twenty three, yeah, and uh, and so that was just kind of funny. And we go in and, and whatever, we go uh, find our seats and um, 
I had this uh, this this one dancer. She leaned over about like I don't know five ten minutes in. I really had trouble tracking time there. Yeah, because they don't have really, clocks, have and no that's clocks. the point. It's, it's like very it's dark. like a it's like a casino. They yeah. don't want you to know how long you're in there. Mm-hmm. They just want to keep feeding you drinks and making sure you go to hit that ATM. Man. Yeah, and I did, and I yeah yeah that was the thing that was the thing uh, that we talked about on the last podcast too. I I don't know how I was going to react mm-hmm. in a strip club, mm-hmm. I, and I felt like I. I predicted it pretty well that once you cross that threshold, the unholy spirit was going to take you over. Yeah. And, I was uh, so shockingly comfortable. I was mm-hmm. like, I was like, Oh, I get how this place works. Yeah. I understand this yep. place. And, uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, so this one girl was like, she's like, Hey, you want to lap dance? And I was like, I was like, well, I mean, we're here for a reason. Right. And so I was like, sure. Why not? And then we go back and she was great. She was Cuban. She spoke Spanish. It was fun and whatever. We're having a good time. Wait, did you say she was Cuban? Cuban. Yeah, okay. I, like thought you said, I thought you said cute man. Cute man. <laughs> <laughs> she was cute, man. She was cute, man. I loved her. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, sure. Okay, I'm not I mean, the stripper. That yeah, song that kept song. playing in my head the whole time. Yeah. It made me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, she was going. And the thing is, like, the DJ doesn't really like ever stop the music, and the music is all very similar. Mm-hmm. So like, we're going, and I'm like, oh, this is fun. And then she's like, she's like, oh, you want another one? And I was like, oh, it's already over. Sure, you know. Yeah, because they charge by the song. Yeah, and they charge by the song, and she goes and, and that, she dances. If, if that's the case, they need to make every song the exact same length. Because yeah. uh, you could get a two minute song and get robbed, <laughs> or or four minute song and just be spoiled. Yeah. Oh, dude, and I I was just so confused um because I, I didn't really know how it worked and i think one of my mistakes was i told her i didn't know how it works so ah, i think she, I think she jack, should pull advantage of that jack you painted a target yeah i did I, i'm good at that oh uh, you, you you became the sucker i'm a transparent man uh and uh well, at least you have your innocence exactly uh, i mean kind of not, innocence in a strip club yeah which is not good in and it goes out the window i don't think there's any anything that screams i don't understand sex more than being a person at a strip club that says hey this is my first time yeah <laughs> well and especially with your gelled up boy haircut yeah yeah you know, like but if you didn't have the beard you would look like a mormon yeah i know <laughs> it's bad you you have like a very innocent face <laughs> but with sinister intentions behind those eyes yeah don't you worry that's yeah. <laughs> and so you're there you're, you're getting yeah. this lap dance uh what? i get another because i was like oh that was so short mm-hmm. and then she's like all right you want another and i was like i was like yeah she's like you've done four and i was like whoa four. yeah i was like whoa hey what what when did the when did two and three happen and mm-hmm. then uh and then she started speaking spanish and lost me and i was like oh you're a good salesperson mm-hmm. so i walked out and i walked past all my friends and i was like she took all my money and i went right to the atm <laughs> and i proceeded to get two that more is my favorite thing <laughs> you just walk out and you're just like you took it out she's like she took all my money you go right to the atm oh, right to the atm <laughs> well, i wasn't done you know i was, I was gonna call this one an was, L. wait i got i i, I this is not the experience I was expecting. <laughs> I am getting my full strip club experience. So I got two more, and uh, from the same chick. From the same chick. Oh my god, yeah. Jack! Yeah, it was uh, it was interesting, and I went back and I sat down with the guys, and this dude came up to me. Then, well, then this one stripper came up and started talking to me. And it was more like one of the like walking the floor. You want to lap dances mm-hmm. rather than dancing on the pole. And uh, she was there, and I was. We, we just started talking, and I literally talked to this stripper for probably forty minutes, and mm-hmm. didn't end up getting a dance from her, but just chatted with her. You know, <laughs> just had a, had a good old conversation. Um, <laughs> Where did you go to college? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. She said NA. Um, are you paying your way? Or are you done? <laughs> <laughs> are you done? Is this? Is it? Do you, what are you doing, huh? <laughs> we, yeah, that no, was good. I, I, Eminem. Yeah, I like. I introduced myself to her too. I was like, "My name's Jack." She, I forgot her name, but uh, we shook hands. Um, See, the thing I actually really enjoy about this story is that you got all this dancer from the Cuban chick, so it's like you had this connection with her, and yeah. it's like the, that is exactly what their job is. She is really good at her job. Yeah. Oh, I told just to make you feel like they're attracted to you. Towards the end, when I realized I was losing a lot of money on her specifically, I was like, "You're a really good salesperson." Mm-hmm. I kept saying that, and you could tell it was totally killing the mood. Mm-hmm. But at that point, I was so mad at the amount of money I had lost by my own choice. Yeah, uh, I was like coming to terms with it that I was just I was making jokes at that mm-hmm. point. And 
So then that stripper, then she got called on stage, and then this dude came over, and let me paint you a picture of this dude. He had a backwards baseball cap mm. and a CU polo, mm-hmm. and uh, he came up to me, and he's like, oh, man, and then he was like, he, he <laughs> dialed 10 digits into his phone, he made a call, and he said, what's your name? And I was like, Jack, and he was like, he, was like, he put my name into his phone with that random 10-digit number, he's like, man, I got your number, and I was like, okay. What? Sure you do. Yeah. What if it was actually your number and he was some psychic and he's just like, is this your number? Yeah. (laughs) It's like, whoa. You deck him in the face. You get out of there. I should have. Shotgun Willies has uh, psychics? Not happening. Not You're happening. not fucking with that voodoo S- shit. Strippers and psychics. Strip- uh, no yeah. You That's know what? That would show. be a hell of a show. Yeah, there that we go. That would be a hell of a show. <laughs> <laughs> Strippers and psychics. Is this your G-string? <laughs> <laughs> and, um... Uh... Friggin... And then he he, 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 he goes... Um, what do you say? Oh, he's like... He's like, man... Kind of wish I had done cocaine tonight. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, you didn't. Uh, and he was just like, go and go. And he's this high energy guy. And then he's like, he's like, okay, okay, I'm gonna tell you something, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the world. You a Viagra guy? And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't need it. And he was like, he's like, okay, oh, but, 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 one day you will. And uh, this, this is what's gonna happen. Okay, forget Viagra. Throw it to the side. Okay, you will fuck. Okay, do this. Take one of these. And he hands me a little pill. He's Here's like, what you do. Yeah, he goes. Here's what you do. Here's what you do. You take one of these, and he hands me the bill. He's like, you take, these, you take one of these one hour before you fuck, and you're having sex of your life. I'm telling you, you're going to be going for days. Days. No. And then afterward, after you're done blowing her mind, you go on to Romans.com. You put your information in there, <laughs> and they're going to send you pills every week. And I was like, what are you, man? A, a sales rep for Romans boner pills? The boner pill fairy, man. Yeah, I just, I just popped in. I uh, ended up uh, having to be talked to by my friends uh, to throw it out the window. I was going to keep it as a, as a little memento. As a souvenir. Yeah. You're just going to take like a little like uh, thing and just carve into it. It's like, oh, what? Was it the 20th? That was the 20th? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 620. 2019. Six twenty nineteen. Uh, be like this, this is my this is my souvenir from the bachelor party. Little old Romans pill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, what was going on with the other guys? So then, um, it, you know, Connor went. And he got a couple lap dances. He got a lap dance from a Russian, uh, which was great. Uh, I believe you know Trevor and Garrett were kind of hanging, and Dylan were kind of hanging back. Mm-hmm. Um, Jake also was hanging back. I don't really know. Where they went because I spent most of the night on my own. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> you know, as a selfish bastard. Well, that's uh, that's what happens. Yeah, I mean, and it's like I went to it a strip club completely by myself. So mm-hmm. you know, and there you, it's really. It, it, I don't think it's as fun uh, with people because. Well, I, it's it's. I, I, I would compare it to. Uh, it takes a certain level of comfortability with your friends and. Uh, being a pig mm-hmm. to be okay with doing that as like a group and just being like titties yeah because it, it was kind of like uh remember in like i don't know middle school early high school when it'd be like we'd get together and then like uh, someone would suggest we all watch porn because we yes. don't we don't watch it individually we're still too timid and stuff and then you'd watch porn with all your friends and it'd just be the most uncomfortable thing it'd be so strange like for a good 35 minutes you couldn't make eye contact or look <laughs> at each other the first person who said i had to go to the bathroom you're just like i'm not going to the bathroom for the rest of the night <laughs> that person definitely dumped a load in that toilet <laughs> And you didn't. Want, and even if you had to go to the bathroom, you held it. Yeah, you fucking held it until everybody was asleep with the sleepover, mm-hmm. and then you go and you finally take a piss. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or you say, ah, I think I left something in the backyard. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the same kind of awkwardness, and I feel like our group, especially, is that kind of awkward. Oh, very much so. Yeah. Um, I. Well, the the one part that that wasn't awkward was the best part. Oh, uh, the best part. Well, I, uh, let let me. Uh, Set the stage that they bought a uh, bachelor package. Now, what you'd think a bachelor package in my brain when uh, that first term came up was like, oh, they got bottle service or at mm-hmm. least champagne. We did. We did. Oh, you did. Okay, mm-hmm. I didn't know that champagne. was it. Uh, Connor would be getting like a uh, group lap dance. Yeah, you got uh, you got five, five yeah. strippers. Yeah. Oh, see, I thought it would be only two. Mm-hmm. That's, see. Right on center stage, too. And then uh, I thought the other one would be like there'd be some sort of cake or food or Mm -hmm. some sort of celebration. Some Red Robin, happy birthday, happy, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy, happy day. 
uh, what would happen next is uh, a shocker of me and uh, to Connor, too. Now, uh, warning, if you have any children listening to the podcast right now, you might want to uh, make them listen to it more. Yes, um, uh, educate them it's on, time to take on what, what, takes, what takes place inside of strip clubs when... Uh, when when parents are looking away, that, that's right. Um, so Connor, Connor, when fathers abandon their daughters, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they, they get Connor up on stage, and um, you know, five five strippers, including the one I had the hour long conversation with, they're all up there. They're all mm-hmm. they're all dancing around him. He seems to be happy. You know, he's, he's having a good time. And then I had been made aware of what this back, bachelor package was from a coworker earlier that day. Ah. So I had a. Very, pretty, fairly good sense of what was. Oh, about so to you happen. were. So that's why how you were so quick on your feet. Exactly. I saw one of the strippers. Uh, I, I she must have gotten it from someone up front, or maybe had it. No, already. somebody else handed her. Handed her a belt, and then I immediately took my belt off, ran up on stage, and handed mine. They didn't want to take it. I made them. Yeah, take it. Like, I insist. I was like, please. I I, I don't know whether you're going to go with this, mm-hmm. but I can see the potential. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so then at first, you know, they, they kind of start whacking him, and he's like, oh, you know, like, oh, some playful this smacking. is interesting, yeah. And then they went, they, there was one hit in particular where it turned, and <laughs> she, she hit him, and you just hear Connor go, ow! <laughs> and just, then they, they hit him a couple more times, pulled him off the stay, or off the, off the chair, He's on all fours, and they're just they're whacking him. I mean, they're beating him like a, like a like a oh poor poor kid. Uh, like he was, uh, you know, Jean Valjean, and he stole some bread. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> if you've seen Django Unchained, think worse. Uh, oh wow, really, Jack? <laughs> no, not that you bad. How dare you? <laughs> You're gonna get canceled in the future for that. Yeah, oh yeah, that's <laughs> just true. Kidding. I just, I just, uh, yeah. Oh, apologies, it's all for the apologies, and the, now nah, they don't care if it's for the joke. It was offensive. Uh, to but people. also, this is a podcast that only have has uh, 177 downloads and 17 yeah. listens. So. Yeah, well, well that, I guarantee. And you. I completely forgot to post last episode on Facebook, so I don't even know if anybody listened unless they subscribed. <laughs> right. So we'll find out we'll this find week out. Mm-hmm. with the analytics and the statistics. Yeah, the analytics. Mm-hmm. But, but uh, yeah, he's he's on the ground. He's he, on the ground. He's getting he, he's getting whipped. Um, clockwork orange style. Yes. There you go. White on white crime. There Think you of go. Orlando <laughs> Bloom in uh, in the second Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. there you go. There you go. Dead there man's chest. Go. Um, and so, uh, yeah, take slavery out of it. Uh, yeah, the least <laughs> offensive whipping. Yeah, I'm still going to have my TV show canceled for this, but that doesn't it's, matter. No, you're um, going to have your life canceled, That's Jack. right. That's right. I'm going to be exercised. <laughs> no, you're going to get fired from your job, from mm-hmm. your whole show, like Dan Harmon, and they're going to ruin it yeah. and have to hire you back. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, but anyway, he's, he's getting whipped. He's getting beaten down. And he uh, then, they, they you know, this happened for a little while, and then they grab hold of his underwear and they start pulling. Oh, from behind? Uh, from the front. Oh, from um, the front? Yeah, well, and he's on all fours. So a girl, like, walked over his head, grabbed his underwear, and then pulled backwards. Like she was doing a cable row at the gym. So, uh, a front wedgie? Like, a... Uh, what? Well, I mean, like, from the back side, you know. Well, that's like, what I mean. Yeah. That's what I meant, like. Gotcha. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Like it was sticking out above. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. We're on the same page. Yeah, yeah, we're good. We're good. And, and she, uh, she went for it from the top, not like, yes. you know, from below. Oh, she, she got she, leverage. She, yeah, she was doing a cable row. She was not doing an upright row. That's right. That's right. Lats much stronger than traps, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Remember yeah. that. And so she, I compare Connor's face to the elasticity, it matched the elasticity of the underpants as she pulled. <laughs> the longer they got, the more his she or his lips pulled back to his ears. He was like, Mwah! and it was, it was so, it looked so painful <laughs> that when Garrett saw Connor and just made eye contact with Connor's <laughs> normal face, he saw his soul. He saw his soul and laughed for about yeah. twenty minutes. Well, that's just Garrett. That's just Garrett. <laughs> that's just old Garrett. Better face. <laughs> <laughs> Garrett and I are very similar in that way. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Except but, you, you, uh, you bring it out of him more yeah. often. <laughs> he's one of my primary targets. Yeah, uh, usually. he's easy. He's <laughs> and so then, uh, you know, they ripped his underpants off. 
Uh, the, with, whole, the whole van, I, or the, like the whole underwear, like they colla- like the structure collapsed, and they pulled it out like an atomic wedgie. There was, if there was any underwear left, they were going at him like uh, like a uh, 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 high school bully in the eighties. Yes, 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 exactly <laughs> like that. And, yeah. and that's hilarious because it's this bachelor package, and it's just like they're punishing him for getting married. Mm-hmm. Exactly, <laughs> <laughs> they're very upset with him yeah, because now he won't spend money. They, on they, them. They're trying to get him to second guess. Like, if this is what happens when you get married, oh my god. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, so then that that happened. It was a good time, and then uh, we we hung out for a little longer. This one stripper came up, who I you know I found I found very attractive, and and was very you know very good at her job. Well, Jack, I mean, they're strippers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, yeah, no, and uh, she came over and asked, and I was like, I'll take one with you. Uh, I ended up getting three, um, and. But she was fun. We had a good time. I, we like she, we like mutually told jokes. The thing that kept happening was she was wearing this very like loose fishnet where like it wasn't like the <laughs> it was just like it was more of a pattern than it was a net. You know yeah. what I mean? But just like strings. Well, it's like what you what, you, what you'd see uh, uh, a whore wear at a uh, rave. Yes, yes, yes. It was just what, like rave what, clothes. What, what color? Were mm, they? White. White. Um, Ooh, okay. And I was wearing a flannel, and my buttons got stuck in her <laughs> in, the, in the lines <laughs> constantly. We half the half the time of the lap dance was <laughs> spent with her to get <laughs> pulling my buttons out of her fish netting, and it was very fun. Uh, it was a very funny visual. She's like. Oh, okay, I, 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 there we go. We got it. Okay, yeah. you can get back to it. And then, oh God, it got stuck. Oh, uh, hey, let me, let me get back. It. There we go. And she did a lot of like standing up and coming back kind of things, you know, like like show off the body, come back to me, get it off. Like not just lap dancing, you know. And uh, she was great. We actually left on very good terms. Uh, mm, she mm. left a hickey on my neck, which I didn't notice for like two or three days. Really? I didn't notice at all. Yeah, Joey pointed it out. He was like, mm. I think it was Joey. It was Joey or uh, somebody else. Um, oh, yeah, you know, all those somebody else was it, there. It was one of the people that was, you know, I interacted with. And uh, and then, yeah, as the night went, then I was out of money for sure. I was like done, mm-hmm. done, done spending mm-hmm. money. How many... Uh, how many dances total did you get, my friend? I had nine. I didn't. I didn't crack double digits. I'm proud of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But I, you know, I spent uh, three. That is an aggressive amount of lap dances, Jack. It's a lot of lap dances. I'll tell you what. How, how'd you up, feel the next day? Uh, in so much pain. Uh, I'll tell you, my pelvis. I mean, it was there was a lump. I <laughs> thought I had a hernia. Um, <laughs> you could have. I might have. Yeah, it was really painful for about about a day and a half. It was just, <laughs> and then we did the four hour drive to Gunnison too. Yeah. So you had to. Uh... You had to uh, deal with it. Yeah, well, and and one of the last things for me that happened in the strip club is one dancer just on the pole, whatever, and we're like kind of throwing the last of our singles, getting ready to go, and uh, she, you know, I, I had no more money, so I was like, all right, I'll just give her compliments, and uh, so she was dancing and doing things, and I, I probably said it to her twelve, thirteen. She was trying to ignore me, uh, but I just kept going, "You're so athletic. No, you don't understand. No, uh, you, you don't. You need to. I, this is what I said to her. You need to listen to me. What you're doing right now is amazing. Okay, there's not a lot of people that can move their body like this, and you need to take appreciation about that. And, and I bet she wish she had those big heels to click in your face so that you shut off. She specifically clicked her heels at everybody else but me. Oh really? uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would have been the thing to do for you to just be like, oh, yeah, fuck, because those things are like a gunshot. They are, man, and they're. Ha- I'm like, how do you wear those? Yeah, what are they night? made of? Like, I don't, freaking titanium, something, dude. Yeah, something that something that is able to uh, blast that level of sound. Yeah, and sting your ears. Um, yeah, they leave them ringing. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. <laughs> um, but yeah, that sounds like a yeah. A we left and time. it was one forty-five in the morning, and I was like, "How the fuck did that happen?" Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, was... roughly around the time that I was waking up. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> as you we were waking up, we were uh, heading back yeah. to, to the home. Yes. <laughs> I missed the. Entire we were heading thing. back your way. In uh, a blink of an eye, to me, I missed the entire thing. It was. <laughs> it was an I experience, just, I man. Just fell asleep, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I was supposed to." Oh. I can never go back. Um, I will spend too much money. Oh, um, well, I mean, like you said, that's a uh, only bachelor party kind of deal. Exactly. And you're really hoping that, uh, you know, it would be a long time before that happens Before again. the next one, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, what, what was your budget going in? Oh, man, I was like... You pulled I, out a certain amount. Yeah, I pulled out I pulled out about 100 bucks with a warning to be ready to spend about two and that there uh-huh. were ATMs there. So you had a buffer and then... Uh, 
you, you blew right past that. Yeah, I went right past <laughs> it. I ended up spending, yeah, close to like 350 bucks. Uh, so you, you bought your suit and some strippers. Yeah, yeah, literally. Uh, Damn, Jack. $700. Damn, on, Jack. On, with the pants now, between literally you and nothing. Garrett, between you and Gary, you guys spent almost two grand. Oh, we spent more than Connor and Chelsea did on their wedding. Yeah, um, probably. <laughs> yeah, because they didn't have to rent the venue. It was on the Bessie property. Yep, yep. And they basically only had to get the Elks Lodge. I spent more on strippers than they did on the bar for the reception. Yeah, yeah. We had a three hundred dollar limit on the bar tab at the at the Elks Lodge, which I, I guess we actually did really well. We with. did really well with because I kept going up there and just being like. Is it still open? And the lady's like, yeah, it's still open. It was open all the way until we left. I think we and, were, like, really the only people drinking, drinking, you know? Us and then Josh. Uh, uh, Garrett. Well, I mean, like, our group was. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, everybody the, from of, our group. Yeah, none of the rest of the family was, like, participating. Yeah. And it's just like, well, okay. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. dive right in. And uh, then, yeah. And we... so we uh, made that four-hour journey, which should be two. Yeah. Should be two. But, you know, Colorado roads. Right. They'll take you all the way out west, and then you have to go back east yeah. to go north. They'll literally take you across the state and then pull you halfway back, and then you got to go halfway back and all the way across the state to get home. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. And I loved when we were driving because, I mean, Garrett, we're having such great conversation. We get to Leadville. I'm like, geez, I didn't realize Leadville was so quick because every time we go to Leadville in the summer mm-hmm. – uh, it always feels like a brutal drive, but it's only like two and a half hours. Yeah. Nothing, nothing. But when you're making a four hour drive, because I remember thinking the same thing when we went to Lake Powell, because we drove through Leadville. Yeah. yeah and it yeah. was just like, wow, this was really quick to get up here. And it's because the journey past that yes. really has your expectations. Like, I mean, a 12 hour drive, two hours is nothing. Yeah. Oh, it's no big deal. Yeah. It puts everything into perspective. Yeah. yeah. And so we finally get to Gunny mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, get you guys checked in and meet up with everybody mm-hmm. and then uh you know we have to get ready for the rehearsal in which case uh you know we said it was 345 uh we're all supposed to be there rehearsal and, starts at four yeah, yeah the rehearsal starts at four and we get a text from connor at 350 saying the the the, the groom the mm-hmm. groom and saying oh we have some stuff that we need to take care of at the elks lodge so go ahead to the property we were at the property for a good half hour before the, the groom showed up yeah, yeah and we still had chairs to set up and the whole uh wedding arch and everything mm-hmm. but it was cool it was i mean time. it was a nice little uh it's a beautiful property it was a beautiful property oh my god yeah, it, they got the it, hook up. it was like this they've had it for almost 100 years mm-hmm. and uh like all the buildings there are original, but they've had, you know, expansions and stuff onto it. But it's right on this big, wide river. And, mm-hmm. I mean, we've been getting so much water that it's flown. It's mm-hmm. gorgeous. And you got this gorgeous cliffside right there. This dense, lush uh, greenery, like trees and, you know, foliage. I sent the video, like a panoramic video to my dad. And he's just like, are you still in fucking Colorado? Yeah. That does not look anything like I've ever seen around here. I'm like, well, that's the Bessie property for you. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that is something that... A little hidden it. gem. It is. Uh-huh. And they saved a buttload of money. Yes. And so we finally get everything squared away. We're about to get rehearsal going. And uh, I have to be the one in charge of starting it off. Because mm-hmm. your boy's the minister. Or minister. Minister man. Hashtag ordained. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, so we finally get everybody paired up. Some bridesmaids weren't there. And, uh, you know, everything was trying to go off. And <laughs> start going and... Yeah, I wasn't going to do the whole spiel that I was going to do for the wedding. I didn't want to spoil jokes. I didn't want to... And a lot of it was extemporaneous. You're not telling your bits on a podcast. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're telling them on stage. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've already told some of them on the podcast. (laughs) Uh, At least my favorite one. (laughs) But uh, the uh, thing was supposed to get going, and Chelsea's parents were particularly stressed. Mm Mm-hmm. And I mean, they're old fashioned too. So we start getting it going and I'm like, okay, so this is the part where the processional bring everybody down and everybody lines up. Mm-hmm. All right. And then, uh, I have to do the, uh, welcome and acknowledgements. They're just like, you have to tell people to get be seated. And I'm like, oh yeah, I guess that's the case. Okay. And then, so, cause they have kids involved. Yes. Jack, hundred percent. I will not have kids involved in my wedding. No, no, yeah. no kid, no kids will be walking down that aisle. Children. I don't care. I don't care if my, if it's my nephew or uh, or my niece, like John and Lydia's kid, mm-hmm. I will not abide them being my flower girl or my ring bearer because I, at my sister's wedding, they had uh, one of John's nieces 
uh, be the flower girl. And kind of like the flower girls at this one, they would take one step and then throw it down mm -hmm. and then cover the entire aisle. But they were thorough. Yeah. And it would take a good 10 minutes for them to get down the aisle. Yeah. And so we had to deal with kids and organize that. And once we get that going, mm -hmm. I'm just like, all right, this is the part where I will get, take a moment of silence. And then I will uh, do the reading that Chelsea has provided me. And then we'll do the vows. Uh, but like when we had Chelsea walk down the aisle with her dad, he's just like, "Aren't you supposed to ask me a question?" I'm like, I, 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 I don't know, because <laughs> it's such an old fashioned thing to give away the bride. Sure. And yeah. I think that uh, my dad gave away my sister, but I do not remember what the question was, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't remember it in the book or anything. The question. At the specific question. So the next day, before the wedding, I had to Google it. There we go. There we go. Because <laughs> I had to make a whole outline that I held on stage mm -hmm. of every, like, make sure I had the reading and everything and the unity ceremony verbatim because those are the two things I needed to get right for right. sure. They, that didn't have to come from me. And uh, so I was just like, okay, I've got to get that part down. And I'm just like, okay. And then we do the ring exchange and we do the unity cer ceremony. And then we I do the pronouncement and then – all right, everybody start filing out. And then her mom yells at me, like, you have to make the announcement. I'm like, I just did. <laughs> and, like, I started getting really frustrated with them because oh. they're, they're micromanaging me. And I'm like, I am the guy in charge of this thing. I have all of the power. <laughs> they have given me so much power this weekend. Oh, we do. <laughs> yeah, so much power. I was wearing a power suit. <laughs> Literally. I looked like the kingpin. Yeah. Goddamn kingpin. <laughs> uh but we got through it. We did two takes. Two, two takes. Yes. And, uh, you know, everything was fine. Then we started uh, drinking, and everybody showed up, and we were having a good old time reminiscing. Mm -hmm. That was a really good night. That, was, was. that was a nice low-key party night. We got a fire going, which mm -hmm. I didn't expect. We got a fire going, stories going, and drinks flowing. It was really, really nice. Yeah. It was a really nice get-together. Loved it. Yeah. Loved it. And then everybody went back to the hotel, except for me and Trevor, who stayed with Connor mm. in the cabin. And I, I remember, uh, you know, Connor was getting ready for bed. And then me and Trevor were just in the kitchen. And Trevor's standing there with this big barrel of stale <laughs> cheese balls. Stale like cheese balls. Like three-year-old cheese balls. <laughs> probably older. And he's just standing there. We're not really talking. He's just focused on just shoveling these just cheese balls. Just eating all He's just them. eating all these cheese balls. Uh, just one after the other. Just cheese ball, cheese ball, cheese ball. And, I mean, like, I'm just like... Uh, I'm kind of winding down, but I got to finish this, you know, uh, whatever Gatorade and vodka that I made mm. or soda and vodka. I don't know. But I had like, I had like half a Gatorade bottle of it. And I'm like, mm. I got to finish this. And so I do. And I start joining him eating the there cheese balls. And we're just sitting there eating the cheese balls in silence. And then Connor's like, all right, let's get ready for bed. We finally go to bed. And I wake up. And the first thing that I see is Trevor in bed. And there's this painting <laughs> this picture frame over him at this 45 degree angle like it's about to fall and hit him in the head <laughs> and i wake up i am so alert the hangover is immediately gone i'm like oh my god trevor and he's like what and i'm like oh and i start looking around the room all the pictures <laughs> in that room are hanging at a 45 degree angle on this like banister thing yeah. that's holding them all up and must have been holding them all up forever mm -hmm. because all of the pictures in there are like that <laughs> and i'm like they they have these like this on purpose like they're hazards mm -hmm. i'm like jesus christ and i look over and there's this orange soda and i'm just like nice drunk sam hooked it up some orange soda there first thing in the morning and i take a big old swing of <laughs> fucking vodka in it. oh <laughs> I'm no like, damn it <laughs> right out the gate <laughs> That was the worst tasting thing. Yeah, I can't even imagine. Yeah, but it, it did help, you know, not let the hangover set in. Yeah, you know, like it was like a it was like a, a trailer park mimosa. <laughs> <laughs> but so we uh, we're just sitting there bullshit and waiting for everybody to show up. And his aunt made us biscuits and gravy, which nice. were dank, legit. We get everything set up, and then you guys all start showing up, and it, there's just fucking violent rainstorms. Off and on rainstorms are coming Crazy. down. Yeah. Coming down. <laughs> and Connor and I had to go back up to the house to print off. Well, I had to print off the ceremony outline, and then he had to print off his vows. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they were, they were pretty good vows. Yeah. I, I really I was. Uh, oh, I teared up up there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Me too. That was Big the time. whole thing. It was, yeah. <laughs> I was just, like, looking at them, and they're like, what? And I'm like, I'm just 
taking well so I don't freaking cry in front yeah. of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other moment where I was looking at them, they're looking at me, and they're just like, what? Aren't you supposed to tell us to kiss? I'm like, I thought I already did, because what ended up happening was I mixed up the unity ceremony and the ring exchange. Because uh... when the ring exchange happened, you know, they're supposed to, you know, I said, you, I do, and they put the ring on each other's fingers, and that's when I thought I had to pronounce them. Because that's natural, and right. that's a cliche way to do it. But they're supposed to do that, and then the unity ceremony, which theirs was pretty unique. I wasn't expecting it, because usually they do what my sister and John did, which was, like, they put their hands on flat on top of each other, and then the minister does this, like, tying ribbon ceremony. Well, thank God they had something planned, because I was just like, well, if they don't tell me that I need to learn this ribbon thing, <laughs> then I'm not going to learn it. So I didn't, and, uh, but... <laughs> That was the one thing I messed up was I mixed up those two things. and But they said it was fine, but I was really not happy about it. Really not happy about it. But the wedding went off really well. Mm-hmm. I loved how, uh, uh, you know, the, all the pictures and everything. We had a great time with the photographer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, was that was a great fun. time. I can't wait to see all those pictures. Yeah. Um, and the, uh, the reception for my jokes. Mm-hmm. I had a joke about hurting kids, and people liked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I even got her parents, who I seemingly thought hated me, to laugh and like me. Yeah, you got the dad without a good one. Yeah, right? well, because at the end, I'm like, all right, I need to make the announcement. Which his mom was really, her mom was really, you got to tell people to go to the Elks Lodge. Mm-hmm. And so, like, all right, everybody, we're going to be meeting at the Elks Lodge for the reception. Uh, friends and family, stay here for pictures. And Chelsea's like, no f- no friends. I'm like, no, no friends. Yeah. Friends, get out of here. And her dad just started laughing that so him, hard. That made him go fall. That made him yeah. really laugh. And I'm like, good okay. Old, good, good old cowboy laugh. I, I, got, I got Lynn. Yeah. Like, that is a cowboy name, yeah. Lynn. <laughs> Lynn Holt. Yep. Yeah, that was a, that was a man of the earth yeah. name. And so we... Uh, we made it. We got through it. Yeah, we did, man. I'll tell you, I had a couple, a couple trip ups on on the way through there. Um, so I, you know, I was still reeling in and from a, a deep lack of sleep, being sick, and a hangover mm-hmm. the whole weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, and so felt pretty good Saturday morning, ready to go. We get our our, our delicious breakfast from uh, that that gorgeous waitress. Uh, that I didn't fall in love with any strippers. But I fell in love with the mountain waitress while we were up there. Oh, uh, the one at the cafe. Yeah, yeah, she was, great. She was real cute. Those freckles her. were real adorable. Yeah, she, and she was really funny. She, she was. Um, yeah. But then, uh, so we had that. We're good. And I was like, All right, I, I had that freaking ten dollar Bloody Mary just because mm. I wanted the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> just I took I all I took all the other fixins out uh-huh. and drank it. And I just I just wanted that piece of bacon. Just wanted the bacon. Yep. And uh, <laughs> then uh, I need to wrap Connor's gift. You know, a little little irresponsibility on my part, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I went. We went to the Dollar Tree. We get everything we need. We got scissors, tape, wrapping paper. Got him a car. All that mm-hmm. good stuff. And uh, and uh, as I was. Uh, Told by you, you've never wrapped a gift in your life. How do you make it 23 years and never wrap a fucking present, Jack? Well, well here's the fun part. I still haven't. Uh, because two things. One, we thought it was silver wrapping paper. It was clear. Nice. It was like saran wrap like for cellophane. presents. Yeah. That's weird. Like, it, it was so... It makes zero sense. Why does it exist? Yeah, well, you know? that, that's, that defeats the purpose of wrapping it. Like, I wanted to get mad at myself for buying it, but I was like, I'm just mad that this is a thing, yeah. you know? No, that's stupid. And then, like, I, I needed a couple of attempts to wrap it. One, because the, the material for wrapping was so... I mean, it was just like... It was just, like, impossible to yeah. use to wrap. It's so thin. Yeah. So I was ripping it and all this stuff. Well, it's like trying to wrap it in saran wrap. Yeah, and I, I had... it doesn't stick. I had a wrap and a half total. That, that one wrap around and then I tried again and I got halfway through and it was done so I was like screw it wrote on one half of the card I was like I love you guys I wish you all the happiness I can't wait for all the adventures ahead of you and then on the other half sorry about the wrapping paper yeah mubby I'm nice the, I'm irresponsible nice uh, and then uh, then from there now it's just good times we get back we're, we're hanging in the cabin drinking have a good time go through the set do the pictures fun stuff uh, do the uh, ceremony tear up it's really nice the bridesmaid I was I was with I don't think liked me at all. No, uh, I don't think she dug my energy in the slightest. Oh, it's because you got the bull in the china shop energy. Yeah, yeah. You know, everybody else seemed to be digging it, but if you're like a part of it, like if you're in the eye of the hurricane, if you're finding Ghidorah in the middle of that storm, <laughs> you're not happy. Uh, okay, <laughs> nice ref. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's, a, that's a callback to an earlier episode. Uh, and um, so. 
I mean, we got along, but I could, I could, I could tell, especially the day after looking back at it. I'm like, she did not like me. No, that's okay. Uh, it's okay though. Oh, I don't care. Yeah, no. Oh, I yeah. mean, she, she had a boyfriend. She seemed to have a good time. You know, I, I didn't ruin it. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, then. I wanted to, I don't know, we were in a group waiting for pictures, the groomsmen's and the bridesmaids, and I, I don't know what came over me, but I was like... Oh, yeah. Something... No, we're, we're waiting for pictures, you guys mm-hmm. are doing all the pictures, and like you, you did it three times before that moment. Yeah, I did like little, well, I'd like bend down. Like, I'd bend down to pick something Because up. you were just pointing out how uh, restricting the suit was. You don't yeah. have full range of motion, so, oh. so you were trying yeah, to right. you know, do a little bit of like, look, see, this is, this is as far as I can go mm-hmm. if I squat down. And then I was so hyped from the ceremony. I was so, and I, I was confident because my, my pants hadn't ripped yet. Yeah, and, no, you, were, you were just like, yeah, see, I mean, like, yeah. I'm surprised that even just demonstrating that. Yeah, you know, I'm like, I'm like, you know what? This, the ceremony went great. We're on a good path. Let's see how far I can push my luck. And so I was like, check it out. I can hit a full squat in slacks. And I ripped a hole so big my butt cheeks that was their own. Oh, the funniest thing jack because uh i feel like in that instance what well, one thing that was so fucking funny about that tear was like you think it would be a regular sounding tear that it would be like a shh mm-hmm. as each seam pops apart no all of the seams popped apart at the exact same time yeah it just went from closed to open yeah it sounded like a gunshot just pop uh, yeah and all your butt was out and i i had to leave yeah. i laughed so hard and the thing that was funnier for me is that um jack i i feel like you, a man who is such a fan of myths, no, I love it. Would be somewhat cautious for things like this, uh-huh. uh, having being familiar with the uh, legend of Icarus. Yes, yes, flying too close to the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except you didn't have a Daedalus to tell you not to do that. We're exactly. just like, wow, okay, he's not ripping his pants, and then you did, and it, it, it was just bedlam. Yeah, everybody yeah. lost it. Jack. Everybody was, laughed so that hard. That was the best thing you could have done in that moment because mm-hmm. I... we were just waiting. Because it was just oh, pictures, 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 pictures. Mm-hmm. Her family, Connor's family, some of the groomsmen, some of the bridesmaids, all of you guys. It, it was a whole thing. It's one of those moments you never forget. You right. know? And, yeah. Uh, and I, good thing it was on the butt of your pants because you had so many more pictures to take. Yes, I did. And uh, <laughs> every time somebody would come up to me and like say something later throughout the night, I'd be like, oh, yeah, well, you're not the one with the hole down to your taint. Uh, yeah, you were you were wearing those the whole rest of the night, huh? Yeah, I had to. I, I had know. some bonus pants, too, I could have given you. Like with you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because you slept at the cabin. Yeah, and yeah. I left them there. Uh, oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah, Connor <laughs> texted me. He's like, did you leave some dress pants here? I'm like, oh, yeah, because my dress uh, suit jacket came with those pants. Mm. It's called a smart suit. I see. All you have to buy is that, and then if you have a shirt and tie, you're set. Yeah, which I did. <laughs> so I gotta get the I gotta get these pants uh, fixed. But you know, yeah, you gotta get them fixed, and not by your mom, because mm. I, I can just see Jenny just really. Really digging India. Oh, she knows. She, uh, you told yeah. her. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, she knows, and she she finds it hysterical. Yeah, because um, it is hysterical, Jack. You, yeah. Because have I told you how much my suit was? Huh. God. Good. Good. Because I've been waiting for this moment to tell you. So you spent three hundred fifty dollars, right? Mm-hmm. My entire suit, tie, and pants, fifty five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could take a picture of your face right now. <laughs> I'm so frustrated. Uh... I mean, technically 75, but I opened up a Kohl's credit card so I could get that 30%. <laughs> it had to be done. I don't know. 55 dollars. I felt like I was looking pretty good the whole time, but then yeah, then I then I blew out my ass. Uh... Fire! <laughs> Fire! But then yeah, no, we took pictures and um... and then we uh, mo- we got. Thank God, I suggested it. We got the whole. Combat squad. Yeah, we did. I can't wait to see professionally that one. F- photographed. So I mean, we we did get to have to stick around for a while, but mm-hmm. also, I forgot there was a delay with the Elks Lodge. Yeah, and you know, we were also worried that the bar tab being three hundred dollars, it was just going to dry up immediately from all those other guests, and we we're just going to get maybe like one or two drinks each. And uh, not the case. No. We go to that brewery place, and. You know, we're, we're just hanging out, waiting for it to start, and then all of a sudden it's like, Sam, you got to get down there so you can start this thing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. 
And uh, so we used the man of honor, Josh, uh, Chelsea's uh, buddy. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he, had, guy, by the he way. was a great I guy. Him. Oh, he came in clutch so he much. Awesome. He was my co MC. He's a funny dude. Yeah. Well, and the thing was, was we had to do the whole thing on Spotify. His girlfriend was really, really beautiful. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I scouted her for you before there was all of a sudden. Yeah. Like yeah. right, it was like literally right after you said that I was like, it was like okay, sure, Sam B's got my back, and then Josh went and made out with her like as soon as you yeah. left the room. Yeah, uh, that's so funny. I was like, oh, never mind. Yeah, it's so uh, funny. But like we get there, and I him. and I had to set up the musical cues and all this stuff. Well, I'm not familiar with Spotify. I'm ride or die Apple uh, Music. Sure. I am not familiar with Spotify. And like I was mildly tiffed at myself, not even mildly. I was tiffed at myself for confusing that thing. But everything was fine. They they laughed everybody mm-hmm. was cool with it we get in there and i'm trying to get these m- musical cues down because mm-hmm. i want i want to do it right for them because i understand in my brain how important that would be like i mean to orchestrate that whole deal mm-hmm. and have it be like you know kind of like a movie like you know the like we played that song from the office yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. i had to get everybody bubbles so they can blow bubbles as chelsea comes in and all that stuff and that part went right and I start playing the song, and I start trying to cue up the next song, and then it skips that song. Oh. It skipped that song that was already playing, the, the song from The Office, uh-huh. and then I tried to get back to it, and then it, because it was in shuffle mode, it didn't save that song. So that song was gone, and uh. I had to go and re-cue it, and that was my main problem the whole night, Right? was right. The, all these musical cues kept getting fucked up by Spotify. I'm not familiar with Spotify, and I couldn't get it back, and I would get more and more frustrated and fire more and more drinks in my system and get more and more mad at myself uh-huh. and depressed and stuff like that, and, you know... It, it it ultimately came out with you pulling me aside yeah. and really giving me the perfect talking to. I don't remember specific details, but it was like people kept coming up and being like, hey, man, don't worry about it. It's fine. Yeah. Everything's good. You Don't worry about it. And people kept reassuring me, but I kept beating myself up about uh-huh. it because it wasn't perfect. Because like this in, the intro to this episode, everything's got to be perfect, but perfection is not something to demand for myself. Mm-hmm. And the thing that you told me that really stuck with me, I mean, I don't remember the whole conversation. I remember the tears and stuff like that. But mm. the one that stuck out to me was you, well, yelling at me to shut up because I talk <laughs> over you. But I've never actually seen you genuinely mad. Yeah. But I really, I was just like, wow, he actually cares. Better, yeah. better listen. I, I was, like, we always joke about how I don't know how to get mad. And, like, it was, like, this mix of, like, mad and like I was really I was like nervous for you because I could tell like something was different and then like I had started so you know how I talked about the whole weekend um it, it you know everything would start with a lot of energy and then a crash you mm-hmm. know so like you know Thursday started with a lot of energy at the bars and a lot of jokes and it ended with me spending a lot of money and not having very good judgment mm-hmm. you know and then uh Friday started with me you know pretty high energy feeling pretty good carrying through the coffee that I just put an IV into myself <laughs> for so that I could survive the four hour right. drive and then like crashing to a point where everyone's like are you okay and i was just tired yeah you were pretty low energy by the end of the night oh i was like halfway through it even i had to just sit in that lazy boy and just take a minute to Mm -hmm. just like slow down Mm -hmm. and then that night you know i came in high energy and i got a good amount of sleep and by the time we got to the alpine brewery and like there was no table for us and i was like i don't know where we're gonna sit yeah and like we gotta we've got like 15 we don't have time to like wait and stuff like that i'm getting hungry and like you know, mm-hmm. I just, I mean, like, well, yeah, it's, it, the tension was yeah, rising. Half of me was like, half of me was like, God damn it. I just blew my ass out of my pants mm-hmm. and now I'm standing here like an idiot. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, like that, you know, as funny as I thought it was and like as shameless as I tried to be about it, mm-hmm. there's still that little bit where you're like, you know, I just blew 350 bucks on strippers and I just blew out my $175 pants, you know, yeah, yeah. like I'm just getting like kind of frustrated. And then <laughs> you like ran up. And you ran into a door that, like, specifically said, Bessie Entrance used the gate. And I was like, where is he going? And then you were gone. And I was like, okay, we'll see what happens. And then I was like, I was like, you know, I felt my heart, like, racing. And I just, I wasn't used to that oh, feeling. Oh, for me, who, me? Just, like, that was one of the things. Like, you went, like, um, you went, yeah, you went into the door that, to get into the Elks Lodge, which I think you still. I had to. Yeah. Oh, you had to. Okay, I had cool. to because I was setting everything up. Right. And there was something about that. I was like, wait, that's the wrong way. What if he gets locked out and this takes a little bit longer? You no, know. No, no. I had. I, I had to go that way. And then, yeah, it seemed like it all worked out there. And then, um, yeah, I don't know. I just. 
everything just started accumulating up and my heart was it, was it was a panic attack i was having a panic attack but i was mm-hmm. i knew i couldn't well, just like, i was too in a way yeah because like my reaction when i have a panic attack is i just got to get out of there like mm-hmm. i just need to leave and i can't oh, yeah. i can't leave i'm a groomsman right. right and then i'm like paying attention to you because you're the MC and stuff like that and i, I know you better than anybody and I was like, something's fucking off here. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's really upset. Why, yeah. is he, why is he drinking more if he's so upset? Well, and yeah, was, that was the thing. I guess because mm-hmm. I was getting more and more frustrated with that Spotify snafu and the thing that, you know, I was in charge of mm-hmm. isn't going perfectly. And so it's like my my whole world was, you know, crumbling. And yeah. so I was just firing Jack and Cokes down my throat. And that was really not the move. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, I, I, I felt so ashamed. I went and sat with all the other people away from the wedding party and had to get pulled back to the wedding party mm-hmm. and all this stuff. And then you finally pulled me out and, like, was really, you know, you, you were blunt yeah. in, in the way that I needed. I've never done the, that before. The, the thing that you said to me that really stuck out was mm-hmm. that I was being selfish. Yeah. And, yeah, I was. Mm-hmm. Because... That was me pulling the attention towards myself of the thing. Like I, it, like anybody would give a shit if I was fucking this stuff up because right. it's not about me. It's right. their day. And I mean, if I and like I kept apologizing for messing stuff up. What I should be should be apologizing, and I really I'm putting it on the record here. Yeah. I should apologize to everybody else for being so fucking selfish. Because mm-hmm. when you said that, and we started talking about like how hard I was drinking that night, and you know that you know all that stuff it actually made me look at all the other things where it's like holy shit all my vices everything that i do to procrastinate it's all because i'm selfish Mm -hmm. and that was really eye-opening for me and i said it because i'm very similar like i Mm -hmm. a lot of things i do i like i'm very concerned with myself first and then everybody around me well it made me reevaluate a lot of things yeah yeah like like um what i got winston because uh i wanted something to love me mm-hmm. not to take care of something mm-hmm. and that's totally changed immediately how i treat winston and how i'm taking care of him yeah. i'm actually putting in effort to run him and ec- take him to proper exercise and walk him and give him proper attention because mm-hmm. he's been shitting in the house because he hasn't been getting proper attention and that's and, on me and the thing that made me like so scared to say that is like i, I hope he doesn't take this like he's a selfish person you know like no, i'm being selfish exactly but, yeah but and you also, took it really well like yeah. you took it exactly how and that's yeah. why i'm always but it's so like afraid certain to say things, things that i think i'm doing for other people for you know kind selfless reasons mm-hmm. it's you know because like i could say for example i took angene to uh ruth's chris steakhouse you know? oh nice yeah uh, and baller that was like one of the things because we drive past it every time i go to her house mm-hmm. and you know coming back and all that stuff because right on bellevue mm-hmm. and you know i just looked at it and i just love because tom segura has this whole railing joke against ruth's chris because how stupid that name is because yeah. it used to be chris steakhouse a woman named ruth bought one of the franchises called it ruth's chris steakhouse mm-hmm. And then Chris Steakhouse went under, and Ruth's uh, Ruth's Chris Steakhouse blew up. Yeah, so, I mean, like <laughs> that's, that's awesome. just hilarious to me. And then I go there, and I mean, it was wildly expensive, but I was just like, oh, yeah. "I'm taking you to, the, I'm going to take you to that place for one of our anniversaries." And we did, and uh, you know, it was because I wanted to go there. Right, right. <laughs> you know, so I started looking at stuff like that, and it's just like, "Holy shit!" You know, I, I am. And in that case, too, like, you know, I'm sure she really enjoyed that night and had a great time. Mm-hmm. And, and it's great food. And you got to do things that you want to do. But, like, everybody kept – this This is what made me really mad at the end. The whole group came up to me after we had – because we talked for a long time. And I missed most oh, of the Oh, you and I. Yeah, we, yeah. Well, we walked around. We walked around. But, like, we talked. Like, we mm-hmm. had a conversation and we did some work. I didn't just blow up on you and call you, like, a loser or a drunk or something. Mm-hmm. I was like, hey, man – Stop what you're doing. I see why you're doing it. And, and and this is part of me, too, kind of being a control freak and white-knuckling the steering wheel. And mm-hmm. like, I take, Well, you and I both have that same kind of, like, we get, like, panicky about certain things like exactly. that. Exactly. Like, it, it is a very strong uh, source of anxiety. And it's something where, like, too, when I start, like, feeling an emotion, I can't just pretend like it's not there. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, I, I've tried, and I'm just not – I'm not the person I want to be, so I'm like, let me work out this emotion and be the person I want to be. Mm-hmm. And with you and me, it's a very charged, close relationship. So I knew – and also, you were a little drunk, so I knew – Well, that was the thing was I was like, I don't see him yelling at me if he didn't have anything in his system. 
Right. You know, yeah. in, in, inhibitions were low and suggestibility was yeah high. And, well, and, and then everybody kept coming up to me afterward, and I love this and respect it because they were like, oh, "We want you to have a good time. Right. We want you guys like we don't want you fighting at a wedding reception." Yeah. Like, get that. I love it. But like, they were like, you know, he if he gets drunk and makes a fool of himself, he's not your responsibility. And I'm like. But he is, because he's my brother. You know what I mean? And you mm-hmm. all are. If mm-hmm. any of you were doing that, I'd cut my good time, I'd take you out, and I'd talk to you. Mm-hmm. And I realized that there, you know, because... Well, we would all do that for each other. I would hope, you know? You and know? like, and, and that's where, like, people kept saying, like, oh, it's not your responsibility, it's not your responsibility. And I'm like, I get that, and I respect you for mm-hmm. saying that. And, like, part of me was like, yeah, am I, like, controlling Sam too much? Am I just not letting myself have a good time? And no, like, honestly, that whole talk, uh, well, it made me realize a lot of things because it's that whole me talking over you Mm -hmm. and i feel like that happened in the podcast and it's because i come in and crack open a few beers during the podcast and that gets my mouth running Mm -hmm. but i mean sometimes it's good you know like during the weekend during conversation i i would be on it for Mm -hmm. a lot of things but i would also be a motor mouth Mm -hmm. and you know that frustrated you and you finally shut me down and Mm -hmm. i've been fine like you know i i'm aware yeah you know and that was something that needed to be made and uh, that that whole selfish thing that that really honestly made me have a 180. Yeah, I had a full 180 and was able to you know go back and drink happily, go back and celebrate with them, mm-hmm. start dancing on the dance floor like an idiot, actually having fun, bringing up the new segments and stuff for the whole thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I you know enjoyed holding the uh, microphone for Chelsea's dad while he sang that song, which was stuck in my head. <laughs> So bad on Sunday. Oh my god! And it was just part. Which was that? Where was I when that happened? I don't know. Huh? Very good question. Because he went up there and he played a song on the guitar and he sang to it and I held the microphone for nice. him. Yeah, yeah, and it was for Chelsea. And I didn't know all the lyrics to it. And uh, you know, have you ever been hung over and you have a song stuck in your head? Oh sure. Yeah, I, that no. happens to everybody. But I mean, this one it was part of that song, just part of the chorus. I didn't know all the lyrics to it, and he it was just his voice over and over in my head, and I'm just like, <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> get him out, get him out now! <laughs> well, I got to shake his hand, and it, it all ended up real nice. We yeah. ended up, and then we were able to pile into Dylan's truck and fire down those couple of draw. Uh, blocks to the uh holiday inn mm-hmm. no problem and uh you know i i managed to get dylan and cambria to agree to let me uh stay in the hotel because i would have been the only one at the cabin because connor's like oh yeah me and chelsea got a hotel and i'm just like <laughs> wait and then trevor's gonna go stay with charlie now he's like yeah you can stay at the cabin if you want i'm like well who's gonna take me here yeah, who's gonna, who's gonna pick me up yeah i don't i, I don't want to be stranded i mean <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful robbery but i would be alone yeah with yeah. The, his family i don't know yeah so i managed to get dylan and cambria to agree and they were both wildly trash yeah they, 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 everybody by the end of that night everybody was pretty stone cold drunk yeah like, i mean was... like i hit bottom during the reception and started coming back up when the emergency came in uh-huh. which was uh the renos being yeah. uh way too fucked up because uh-huh. we get out of the truck and then we're all walking towards the hotel the cambria starts falling forward and dylan catches her mm-hmm. and pulls her back and i put my hand on her back and then he just falls flat backwards. <laughs> I'm just like, holy shit. Yeah. I got to take care of these kids. And I managed to get them up to their room and situated. And uh, like, just like uh, during Dark Phoenix, I was Johnny on the spot, man. I was, I got her ice chips. I got her fresh water. Because that Gunnison water is the hardest water I've ever seen. Yeah, Gunnison water is gray. Uh, yeah. 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 No, so I, got, I went down and got some fresh water even though that was a whole ordeal by itself because mm-hmm. I only had a $5 bill and uh, I went and exchanged it to you for some, no, how, how, how did we exchange that? I gave you the five. Yeah, you gave, me, you the gave five. me the change. I gave you change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah, because I only had a couple bucks. I gave you that and then I gave you that extra dollar, but mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. I take that five, I go down to the lobby, get singles, go back up to your floor because our floor, floor two, didn't have a vending machine. Mm-hmm. And so I go up to that floor takes one dollar eats the second dollar won't give me anything won't take any more dollars so i'm just smashing on it <laughs> nope okay gotta go back down to the lobby tell the guy he ate my uh 
dollar mm-hmm. and uh you know i got the bottle of water and free soda nice there we go and managed to go up get cambria situated she was not happy she really hated that i was helping anytime <laughs> she heard my voice she's like sam uh, get the fuck out of here she and I'm was like, not happy i'm just like well i'm not leaving you in charge in the hands of your husband because uh i'm helping him too <laughs> but the thing that was hilarious was you know she Made it to the bathroom just fine and everything. She went in there in her wedding clothes and came out in a totally different outfit. Mm-hmm. But I was like, "What was that? Just like Superman getting in the in the fucking uh, phone booth or mm-hmm. what, what happened? Like, because she wasn't in there for that long. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> she came crawling out and I got her in bed and everything with trash can situated, Jumanji on the TV, mm-hmm. uh, water, ice chips. Gave Dylan some water and then you know she just kept yelling at me and i'm just like all right i'm gonna give her some space uh-huh. go take a walk you know maybe puff my uh, pipe a little bit and meet up with some other all the other people so i go up to your room where there was supposed to be the party keep rolling and you and gary were just like I, we're, we're, we're just about done yeah well for me too at that point something i i had to keep in mind was like you know that place that that where i where i had that conversation with you I mean, I I can't think of a time I've authentically been in that place. Mm-hmm. So it was well, I, it was it was draining. I didn't come, I, could tell. I didn't come down for probably. I mean, until we had breakfast. I could the tell. Next day. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was like, I was hot and heavy. I wasn't mad at anything. I just didn't want to talk anymore. Yeah, I was like, I said. I said things that I needed to say, mm-hmm. and like that's oh, all yeah. I needed to say to them. Emotions you know? were high, and that drains energy, man. Big time. That was the thing. Was we ended up going down to uh, Wes and Danielle, Joey and Jake's room, mm-hmm. and uh, you were there, and Garrett was there for a minute, and then he went to bed, and then you still hung out. And I'm like, he is very clearly tired. Yeah, he yeah. is so tired. Well, because like and... we we it was Jake, Joey, and I. We went out to look for Joey's pen in Danielle's car, and I was like, sure, I'll go. Like, yeah, I'll just hang out because he needed he. Needed needed that yeah. that pen that and i'm like if pen. he finds the pen I'll, I'll hit the pen you yeah. know what i mean like that'll probably yeah. help Why and not? then we came back in and garrett was gone and like you know wes just got like i hadn't talked to wes all night and i really wanted to and um so i was like all right i'll i'll, I'll stay for a little bit and then i was like i don't know how to leave now because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then it was like it was like you would come in and then jake and joey and wes would leave and like you know, Danielle would well, kind of come was, in and out. You know, that's what would ha- that's what happened was. Uh, and I didn't want to leave when someone would like show up. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Well, it was like Danielle and I, I went to the lobby to get some snacks, and she bought two frozen pizzas. Mm-hmm. Well, Wes showed up and brought bought those two pizzas. They already had one in the room, mm-hmm. and uh, then we come back and Joey sees those. And he's just like, oh, oh my god! And so he goes with Jake and Wes to go get more, and they come back with three more. They cook all of these pizzas up, and there were six pizzas just in rotation in that room. And I saw at least two just laying there, uneaten, unclaimed. And I'm just like, well, I'm I'm too full, and, yeah. uh, and I, I don't want to add more onto this and have an explosive scenario. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, there's just these six pizzas in rotation. Everybody's, you know, pretty out of it. And both, that was the thing. Going between both rooms, Jumanji on the TV for yeah. both. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Jumanji kind of night. Yeah. But, you know, we're talking, hanging out, having a good time. And Jake and I had a full, like, half hour conversation about his revolutionary discoveries of mac and cheese. Like, I want to have him on this show to talk about this mac and cheese revolution he's had. He's talking about buying some barbecue uh, pork and throwing in the mac and cheese. He's talking about making all that. Like, I'm just like, yeah, you know, sometimes when I get really high, I take mac and cheese. And do you know how to cook bacon in the microwave? Do you know how to cook bacon in the microwave, Jack? I didn't know that okay. was a thing. Okay, my dad discovered this. It's pretty great. It works better with those half sheets of paper towels. But you take those, you fold the... You take off three sections, fold one in half, put two strips of bacon on top, mm-hmm. and then you fold that top, and then you stick it in the microwave on high for two and a half minutes. It comes out crispy. And then all the grease gets soaked up into those paper towels, and you just wipe the bottom, throw it away. You got mac- bacon ready. So when I make mac and cheese, I'll heat up some bacon, crumple it up, and throw it in the mac sure. and cheese. And he's just like, oh, okay, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I do. And he teaches me all these different ways to make mac and cheese. I'm like, well, sometimes I have these frozen meatballs that I microwave up. He's like, oh, bitch, please. <laughs> Shut me down about the mac and cheese. Here you go. Then, Tomato Boy owns yes. the M- M&C game. Yes, indeed. And then uh, you know, you and Wes were talking about the basketball, NBA, the yes. NBA, which 
way above my pay grade. <laughs> oh, man, we were, we were talking about uh, Nikola Jokic for some time. Joker. Joker. MVP. MB- Giannis won MVP, by the way, which makes me very happy. Who did? Giannis Antetokounmpo from the Milwaukee Bucks. It sounds like a character from uh, Game of Thrones. Not gonna, he, not gonna lie, he he, lo- he sounds like a Miranese lord. <laughs> Giannis Antetokounmpo. Antetokounmpo. There we go. I missed letters on that one. Uh, well, I mean that's a ridiculous name. Oh, but it, you should Change. see it. On a, you should see it on his jersey. It's 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 like an arc. Really? Yeah, because they, they have do to it fit straight. all of it. Yeah. yeah, he won MVP. He was amazing this year. Nice. He was. I mean, I mean, he's six foot eleven and can play the point. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like he's that good. Right. He's that athletic. So it totally makes sense. <laughs> But one thing is, so I'm gonna get into basketball for like two seconds. Um, okay. I saw like all these different like now that the season's over, all these analysts have nothing else to do, so they talk about who would your first team All Pro be, and I would say 90 percent of them, aside from like the real like basic bitch analysts, pick Joker on really? every single one. All of them were like, really? yeah, that dude's out of this world. And then yet yeah, there's a couple like. People that know nothing about basketball, they're like, I still think DeMarcus Cousins should be first team all pro because he was really good seven years ago. Uh, Have you seen Kyrie Irving and Dunk- Uncle Drew? That's <laughs> MVP forever. Oh my God. Shaquille O'Neal, first team all pro this year. First yeah. team. Michael Jordan deserves all the Oscars for Space Jam. <laughs> and LeBron will de- deserve all the Oscars after Space Jam 2. I hope the Lakers lose every game. I had yeah, Anthony no, that Davis was, and LeBron That was James. one thing was when I was saying goodnight to you guys, mm-hmm. that was, I asked you, I'm just like, how do you guys feel about Anthony Davis on the Lakers? And I, you got like recharged with yeah. anger. I felt my heart start to beat the like, same that way. Is, <laughs> that is true rage. I'm like, I I thought that was real shitty shit that they have Anthony Davis now because he's so good. Yeah. And then I saw your eyes just yeah flare um, up. There there was pure heat there. LeBron James and Anthony Davis used to be two of my favorite players, right? Yeah, and they honestly were major competitors. Major competitors. I mean, fun, great to watch, change franchises, so fun. I couldn't wish worse upon those two men at this point. <laughs> there, um, was, there was one bitches. thing. You bitches. You bitch. <laughs> there was one thing I read where it was like, uh, who who else is was up for trades? Is it, wasn't it Kawhi? Kawhi, Kyrie, you mean KD. like new, like, like new, yeah, uh, free agency, new yeah, free yeah. agency, and KD. Mm-hmm. And so I saw somewhere that it was like KD and someone else uh, had conversations about playing with each other. Like they had decided which team they could go to. Mm-hmm. Like they're like the players are in charge, and it's like, uh, uh-uh, uh, that is some bullshit. Yeah, that they could just be like, uh, let's go to this team and make it a superstar team, and it's just like, no, 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 no. Right? Why? Why isn't there fair? Uh, you know, why why do the players get to decide? Yeah, I mean, they're they're the employees. Like it's nice basically. that they don't get fucked over as much as they used to. But like, that's, yeah, that's true. I mean, and they have a lot of free will. But like, it, it ruins to just the be year. like to be able to meet up with another star player and just be like, hey, you should come to this team so you and I can just fuck shit up. It's just like that's not fucking fun. And I would be, and I'm gonna be honest too. It's not even necessarily that they get really good. It's just it, like like. You know, I, I bet the Lakers have made the playoffs and it'll be whatever. They're never going to stop talking about them. Yes. It's like no, oh my God. nobody stops talking about the Warriors. Everybody gets it. They're really good. Well, and it's like every season, no matter what, all the time. Is this it for Tom Brady after a mm-hmm. three-point loss? Like, is this the end? Is this the beginning of the end? And it's just always ESPN. I have had it with ESPN. Yeah, I'm done they with will that. make something out of nothing mm-hmm. constantly. Well, they'll just keep telling the same stories, same yeah. stories. But you know what I think of whenever I think of Anthony Davis now? One of your best impressions. <laughs> yeah. Anthony Davis's newborn uh, temper tantrum uh, thrower, baby. What team was he on before that show? The, the Hornets? Pelicans. The Pelicans? Which technically, well, yeah, They the were Hornets, the Hornets. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, which, that's, so, that's fucking now they have, lame. Wes hates the Pelicans now. Yeah. Because to get Anthony Davis to the Pelicans, they had to trade Lonzo Ball to yeah. the Pelicans. Yeah. And that means. Uh, to I, the Lakers, you mean? Uh, d- uh, from the Lakers to the Pelicans, yeah. Oh, they got um, rid of Lonzo? Yeah, they sent Lonzo. That's awesome. Lonzo was part LeVar of is pissed. LeVar, LeVar is back, and I'm so happy. Yes. Um, because he's so loud. He 
is the Donald Trump of sports. Exactly. Him um, and Donald Trump got into a fight. Yeah, they did. Like, that is the funniest thing, because, like, his sons got caught in shoplifting, and Trump was able to get them op- extradited from mm-hmm. China, and... Uh, he, he immediately jumps on Twitter and shits on Trump, and then Trump shits on him back on Twitter. I'm like, this is the president of the United States. Yeah. yeah Get yeah, into yeah. a Twitter fight yeah. with an ex-NBA player. Was he no. an NBA player? Ex, ex, no. Ex-WWE well, no. ex star. They both have been in the WWE. Mm-hmm. Fucking LeVar Ball constantly talks about how he could beat Michael, Michael Jordan. On his best day now. Yeah. And I, I, think he average, I think he played college basketball for less than a year and averaged like three points a game. Yeah, and now he's like, I gotta have all three of my sons on the Lakers. That's exactly, he said, he said, he's like, he's like, the leg, actually, it's like a minute long. Let me find it. I'm gonna play it. Okay. Um, but I'm gonna wrap up the night because of what happened uh, with me. Yes, so yes. I said goodnight to you guys, went back up to Casa Del Reno and Cambria is asleep and Dylan is like, what is that stretch, that yoga stretch that you do where you lay with your front leg crossed over in front and then you lean forward and you have your back leg straight back uh pigeon half pigeon half pigeon yeah. so he was basically doing the equivalent of that face down on the edge of the bed Dilemma. with his phone in his hands like this so he's like his phone is right above his head uh-huh. like he's been texting and he just put his head down but he's <laughs> doing that like half pigeon stretch and i walk in and he just whoa what happened <laughs> Because it just looked like something bad had happened to him. He's like, oh, no, nothing, man. Like, oh, fucking Dylan, man. I so love I, it. I got him to bed and, you know, everything and managed to shut off and fall asleep. Uh-huh. And then uh, that's when we woke up and went to the cafe. Again. I remember when I ordered the screwdriver, I heard you go, <sighs> <laughs> I was like, we just talked about it. I know. Also, I know. Everybody else Actually, did no, too. it was when I got my second drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was the, like the man Mosa, and then and then after I did that too. I mean, like I just heard you go. <sighs> <laughs> I, was just like, I know, <laughs> <laughs> but also the trip down the mountain would have been way more rough yeah. than it was. But also, Jack, I thought you that, go in. That's my side of of being the control freak of like, oh, you didn't hear what I said, and I'm like, well, that's not exactly what we talked about. No. Yeah, but <laughs> that's the thing was the drive because. I, I really was I was behind you a hundred percent. Oh, I could tell you were they were afraid of my turn. Uh, so. Yes, Jack, because you're not supposed to go around a bend on a mountain and also be kind of going towards the edge while you're doing. Uh-huh. <laughs> you were going so fast and you're trying to do that compensation thing uh-huh. and it's just rocking the car. And I'm like, Poof. uh huh, yeah. Mm. You being sick, that does not help that at all. Mm. <laughs> Had to keep rolling down the windows for fresh air and all that mm-hmm. stuff. But I was behind you. I, I totally was on your side. As far as getting us home as fast as possible, you took the right route back <laughs> down two eighty five. I got his back. I think I shaved like forty minutes to you an hour. You did yeah. well. Yeah, I was did very well. I went it, fast. As dangerous as it was, and uh, annoying as some of the traffic was, mm-hmm. some of the people on the road were bigger dickheads than you, man. Yeah, oh, just that dumb. that one car that was holding everybody up. Yeah, we didn't like her. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. We made it home safe and sound, and uh, we had. A, successful ass wedding weekend it was like three parties and a wedding man that was what's what uh, that was what was up just just one of the most emotional fun you know goofy experiences Mm -hmm. i've had in a long time it was the first time we were able to get every single one of the group together uh and it it was a a very long time and it was was perfect i loved it yeah everybody was great everybody that i mean like the only drama was between you and me, and that wasn't that like wasn't fight even bad. Drama. That yeah. wasn't even bad. We were yeah. just airing out stuff. Yeah, we needed to, and I feel like uh, it could have gone so much worse as far as people being so drunk. Well, like and, nobody yeah. really made an ass of themselves. Exactly. That was that was pretty great. And everybody and, did get that drunk. <laughs> I don't count that Maker's Mark shot. I made it the whole weekend without puking. Hey-o. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I can't puke was, anymore, man. I can't. It's no fun. No, I hate it's, it. it's pretty awful. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I f- kind of figured this was how this episode was going to go. The whole entire weekend was going to take it up. But yeah, you know, we we'll talk about Chernobyl next week. Yeah, we'll uh, talk about something else. And uh, well, yeah, Chernobyl next week for listeners. Yeah, uh, let's let uh, Lavar send. Yeah, us let's out. Ha- let's send it out with Lavar's ridiculousness. I guarantee. Move the Lakers ever did in their life, and they'll never win another championship. Guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> His dumb 
face. They're going to regret it. I'm going to have fun with it. But it's, it's, it's cra- I told y'all it was oh crashing God. down. Now it completely crashed, but at least my son got off the boat before the thing exploded. Oh, my God. You have a chance. You can rewind it and go back. And I said, if you get the three ball brothers, you're going to survive. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. I don't I don't care where Lonzo plays. Like I said about it, I just want to be healthy. I want to play. And it's better to go somewhere. Yeah, you, yeah, you say you don't play. care. And be that guy instead of having all these question marks behind you. <laughs> and once, once you don't believe in him, it's kind of hard to come back and be like, oh, we can leave in him now because now we don't know if you're true or not. You had the first chance to believe in him and you didn't. So guess what? Time to go. God. I mean, that man is one special character. I mean, like he he belonged in the ring in that one WWE match. Gronk did too. Honestly, yeah. they both have those big personalities that belong in the WWE ring. Vince McMahon would sign them in a heartbeat. But uh, it, that's the thing that I love about Levar Ball is that uh, because he's been so notorious for running his mouth behind Lonzo during March Madness and then getting drafted and everything, mm-hmm. it, it, it like. A hundred percent. Anything that happens with Lonzo, they're not going to ask Lonzo. No, they're going to ask Lavar. They always ask. They Levar. don't interview Lonzo. They don't give a shit what he's thinking. Yeah, they no. want to know what Lavar is thinking. Lonzo's just a puppet for Lavar's mouth. Yeah, yeah. He, who, who did? What was the comparison to who he looks like? It was like Drake, I think. Who Lonzo? Lonzo, yeah. Oh, uh, maybe. Yeah. I think it was like Kroger brand Drake. Or something like <laughs> Speaking of, how, how did? How, okay, let's let's end on this. How did you feel about Drake during the entire NBA Finals? I want my chips with the dip. I want my chips with the dip. I texted Wes that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, nice. <laughs> yeah, just first thing in the morning, Wes rolls over. He, he's just waking up for work. Like, I want my chips with the dip. I kept with uh, the dip. I, I kept like talking about how I was winning too, and I was really inspired by Chris D'Elia too. And so I, I was just like, um, I was like, it sucks, man. DJ Khaled made it sound so simple, but I'm here to tell you it's not. Okay, winning's not simple. I mean, actually winning everything. Sure, I'm down. I'm uh, or I'm doing that on auto. I'm, and in parentheses, auto meaning autopilot for uh, <laughs> short. Of course, of course. <laughs> this but, is what you texted West. This is what I texted West, <laughs> and then I go, but fuck. Drake won't leave me the fuck alone, dude. He keeps texting me every day about buying my old high school football jersey. And literally every day I have to tell him, it's not for sale, bro, Chacho. Yes. And then he said, you are a loser. <laughs> yes, and that's why we need Wes on this podcast. I want my chips with the dip. I want my chips with the dip. So that's what I thought of Drake, these episodes. NBA Finals. I just love how he had uh, Steph Curry and uh, Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant's numbers tattooed on his arm, so he had to wear that fucking sleeve. And then he's just like, "I'm all about the Toronto Raptors, man. Yeah. I'm all about them." <laughs> Views from the six, I'll and he's him. running up and down the side <laughs> like he's the coach. Uh-huh. Oh my god! This oh is so great. man, Drake. I love Drake, man. Uh, and I love you, Jack. Love you, Sammy B. You know, it was a great, great weekend. Great app. Great app. And I hope the, uh, the the people who listen to this, who are all there, will enjoy our I, retelling. <laughs> I, I, I think they will. I hope so. Yes, indeed. All so right. We'll uh, talk to you all next week. Love you, people. Peace. Peace.